Chair, we're now live on YouTube. When you're ready, would you like to begin the meeting? Lovely, thank you, Wendy. Good morning and welcome to East Devon District Council's virtual planning meeting on 15th of July 2021. In the absence of Councillor Rag today, I am your Chair, Councillor Sarah Chamberlain, and I would also like to welcome anyone watching the meeting via the live streaming. Planning committee members are here today in the Council cham Chamber at Blackdown House, with other participants taking part remotely, and as well as being live streamed, the meeting is being recorded. So please bear this in mind and be careful with your language. I would also like to remind members that the code of conduct applies throughout this meeting. We also reserve the right to remove and disconnect any participants who are disrupting the meeting by whatever means. In the event of a break in the internet connection or a power cut, please bear with us as we try to reconnect. After 15 minutes, if we are not able to reconnect, we will consider the meeting adjourned and reconvene at a later date. Please check the committee page on our website for details. Members, please make sure your phones are on silent and your microphones are muted when you are not speaking to avoid any background noise levels. Keep points short and do not repeat points that have already been made and do not interrupt. If you wish to comment, please raise your electronic hand and wait to be called. All councillors have been sent the agenda for today's meeting. Any members of public who want to view the agenda can do so by visiting our, our website, www.eastdevon.gov.uk. I would like to start the meeting by nominating Councillor Mike Howe as my vice chair for today's meeting. If anyone has any objections, please can they raise their electronic hand. Thank you, members. I see no blue hands. I will move on to the role of call of committee members here present. When your name is called, please can you unmute your microphone and when you hear your name, please confirm by saying present at Blackdown House. When you have confirmed you are present, please mute your microphone again. I'll hand over to Wendy, thank you. Thank you, Chair. So I'll start with you, Councillor Chamberlain. Present at Blackdown House. Thank you. Um, Councillor Howe. Present at Blackdown House. Thank you. Councillor Bloxham. Present at Blackdown House. Thank you. Councillor Davy. Present at Blackdown House. Thank you. Councillor Desarum. Present at Blackdown House. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Councillor Gazard. Present at Blackdown House. Thank you. Councillor Key. Present at Blackdown House. Thank you. Councillor Lawrence. Present at Blackdown House. Thank you. Councillor Pook. Present at Blackdown House. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Pratt. Present at Blackdown House. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Whibley. Present at Blackdown House. Thank you, Councillor Woodward. Present at Blackdown House. Thank you, Councillor Wright. Present at Blackdown House, thank you. Thank you, Chair. I can confirm we are court today. Thank you very much, Wendy. The running order for today's meeting and the speakers list can be viewed under agenda, agenda item one on pages four to five. Agenda item two. Minutes of the previous meeting held on the 9th and 14th of June 2021, pages 6 to 14. If anyone has a comment on these minutes, please raise your electronic hand. If there are no hands raised, I will take this as an indication that you all agree the minutes. I see no blue hands. Thank you very much. Agenda item three, apologies. Wendy, do we have any apologies? Yes, we've got two apologies today, Councillor Eileen Ragg and Councillor Phil Skinner. Thank you very much, Wendy. Agenda item four, de declarations of interest. There will be a roll call for any declarations of interest. I shall hand you back over to Wendy. Thank you, Chair. 
Um, so uh, when I call your name, if you could just confirm the item number that you're declaring, what type of interest, whether it's personal or DPI, and, and why you're declaring that interest. Okay, so Chair, if I can start with you first, please. Thank you. I have no declarations of interest. Thank you. Councillor Howe. Uh, declaration on item nine, it is in my ward. Thank you. Councillor Bloxham. None, thank you. Councillor Davy. None, thank you. Councillor Dutaran. No, none, thank you. Councillor Gazard. None, thank you. Councillor Key. And an 11, Wendy, ward member. Thank you. Councillor Lawrence. No interest, thank you, Warren. Thank you. Councillor Pook. None, thank you. Councillor Pratt. No interest, thank you. Councillor Whibley. None, thank you. Councillor Woodward. None, thank you, Wendy. Councillor Wright. None, thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Wendy. Can I just ask that all councillors that are in chambers, can you ensure that your cameras are on as well, please, so that people can identify that you're actually at Blackdown House? Thank you very much. Agenda item five, matters of urgency. There are no matters of urgency to discuss. Agenda item six, confidential exempt items. There are no confidential exempt items to discuss. Agenda item seven, planning appeal statistics. I shall hand you over to Ed Freeman for the update on the planning appeals. Uh, thank you, Chair, and good morning, members. Um, so you'll see in the agenda, you've got the usual uh, appeals report on uh, page 15. There's a list of recent appeals lodged, which is hopefully uh, helpful information for, for members. And then on, on pages 16 and 17, there's a list of the decisions that we've had um, since the last report at the last meeting. Uh, you'll see that there's been seven decisions, uh, of which uh, six were dismissed and only one allowed, uh, maintaining our excellent appeals record. Um, so that's good news. Uh, the one that has been allowed, um, slightly disappointing that the inspector didn't uh, agree with us in terms of this uh, quite a substantial uh, house extension, a sensitive location in Sulcan Regis conservation area, and also in our view, impacting on the setting of an adjacent grade two star listed church. Um, it had previous, a previous scheme had been through the system and been dismissed on appeal. And while this had, this was a reduced version and amended from that previous scheme, we did still feel that the initial concerns stood. Um, so slightly disappointing that the inspector didn't agree with our arguments there but very much specific to that case. I don't think there are any specific lessons that uh, we need to learn from that. Um, it's perhaps a reflection of the ongoing nature of the inspectorate's views on house extensions, which seem to be increasingly relaxed as members will have seen from, from other decisions we've had. Um, aside from that, on the following pages, there's a, a list of appeals that are in progress at the moment, which again is hopefully useful for members' information. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, Ed. Agenda item eight, application number 20 forward slash 1841 forward slash full minor 28A Fox Hill Axminster, pages 25 to 31. I would like to welcome to the meeting the agent Matthew Dalton Aram. We just confirm that he's in. Uh, yes, I am, Chair. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, we'll go over to Ed now to present his report. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, hopefully members can see on their screens now uh, the presentation. Uh, tell me if that's not working. Um, and this first application relates to number 28A, Fox Hill in Axminster. Uh, hopefully you can see on the screen the location of that property just off Musby Road in the, in the heart of the town. 
Um, this application uh, is an amendment to a, a previous one, which was approved in 2017 uh, for a two car lay by car parking area to the front of 28A. Um, the scheme has been uh, partially constructed uh, and, and has been amended from, from that previously approved. So what you have on the screen is the previously approved scheme where you'll see that a 15 metre by 3.5 metre wide lay-by was proposed with a staircase rising from there into the garden of 28A and a low stone-faced wall with a bank area behind. Uh, what is now proposed uh, amend is that, that scheme so that the steps up from the parking area now at the opposite end of the lay-by. Uh, the lay-by itself uh, is of the same dimensions uh, as previously. However, the retaining structure is, is now a, a much higher uh, block and rendered wall with a railing above, um, which uh, obfuscates the need for the bank that was previously proposed behind that area. The application uh, is before committee today uh, because it's contrary to uh, our recommendation is contrary to the views of the ward members. Um, the main issues relate to those of highway safety, the impact on the character and appearance of the area and the impact on the amenity of residents. As I say, in highways terms, the dimensions and layout of the lay by remain as previously approved and are in line with relevant guidance. And so there is no objection from the highway authority with regard to highway safety issues. In terms of the character and appearance and amenity issues, um, the, clearly the design with the lower wall and stone facing would have been a more attractive option. However, that is not the question before us today. The question is whether or not the proposal as now before us is acceptable in planning terms. Uh, you'll see from the photographs on the screen that while there, there is an existing uh, low stone wall to the side of the existing, uh, the proposed lay by, and also you may just about be able to make out a stone wall on the opposite side of the road and a stone wall at the end of an adjacent cottage. The area is in fact a, a mixture of materials and you can see the host property and its immediate neighbour is, is rendered and, and painted. Um, uh, and that is very much the mixed character of the wider area. Uh, the proposal is to, to render and paint the wall that you can see on the screen. And we feel that, well, as I say, not as attractive as the original option is still acceptable in planning terms. Um, and so the recommendation is to approve the application. Thank you, members. Thank you very much, Ed. Uh, next, we have uh, Matthew Dalton Aron to speak. You will have three minutes to speak. Uh, thank you, Chair. Planning permission for the creation of the parking lay-by within the embankment to the front of 28 Fox Hill was originally approved in April 2017. Therefore, the principle of constructing a lay-by at the site for use in conjunction with the host dwelling has already been established. Uh, following the grant of the 2017 permission, changes were made during the construction um, of the lay-by to its configuration, which involved an increase to its height and its retaining walls. Um, the position of the proposed steps uh, was also swapped from the northeast side of the lay-by as approved to the southwestern side adjacent one hillhead terrace. Uh, it's considered that the relocation of the steps, the steps to their current position is an improvement to the 2017 permission that makes it easier to access the host dwelling from the lay-by. This revised application was initially submitted back in August of last year, seeking to rationalise these changes uh, made to the lay-by during construction. It was also initially proposed to enlarge the lay-by by squaring off its northeastern end to make a larger parking area. However, the proposed enlargement has been admitted from the scheme and the application now seeks permission only for the lay-by as it is currently constructed on site. But we would agree with officers' opinion that the lay-by would not pose any issue in terms of highway safety and its dimensions accord with the government guidance uh, within the manual for streets. The surface of the lay-by has not yet been finished as the applicant is awaiting permission for the changes. Should approval be forthcoming, the surface of the lay-by will be tarmacked. Um, we would also agree with officers' opinion that the changes to the design of the lay-by do not result in any significant harm to the street scene. The wall that has been removed to create the lay-by had no historic value and was not a heritage asset. 
In addition, the site is located some way from the boundary of the conservation area, and the demolition of walls outside of a conservation area is not development and does not therefore require planning permission. It's acknowledged that the retaining block walls enclosing the lay-by have not yet been finished. They would, however, be rendered and painted should permission be forthcoming as per the recommended condition. While the town council and wall member consider that the lay-by's walls should be faced with stone, we would agree with the officer's opinion that the proposed rendered finish is acceptable as it would not harm the street scene or the character of the surrounding area, particularly when viewed against the backdrop of the row of rendered properties to the south east of Musby Road, as you can see. 30 seconds in the remaining. Thank you. We would also agree with the officer's view that there are no sufficient planning grounds to object to the use of render rather than, than a stone finish. We would, on that basis, therefore respectfully request that members approve the application. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Matthew Dodds Uh Next on my list, I have Councillor Ian Hall, but I see that he's uh, sent his apologies. Wendy, do you have anything to read out? at all or no i don't he just sent his apology okay absolutely fine uh next we have councillor sarah jackson don't know if she's in um, the i couldn't see her um sorry i'm, I'm not sure uh, she didn't send her apologies this morning so whether she's running late um, okay no worries hold of her and I can always come back to her, that's no worries. Now I know we've got, count, next we've got Councillor Andrew Moulding and I know he is in the waiting room, so thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, I think this is reasonably straightforward. Planning consent was given a few years ago, and so the principle of this parking lay-by has been established and there are no changes uh, from the highways' views that it is acceptable in highway terms. Um, visual impact has been mentioned, and uh, as has been stated by Mr. Dalton Aram, the adjoining property in Musbury Road is built in Flint, and there are other Flint walls in the area, but the Fox Hill properties themselves are rendered. So I am perfectly happy with a rendered finish, although I very much hope that it is not painted in that turquoise green colour that we saw on the property behind. Uh, so the main reason for this application is to regularise the car parking bay as constructed. It does need an appropriate protective uh, barrier fence, which is uh, provided for in the application. So the application will achieve what is required for this um, uh, structure to be uh, achieved and regularised. And therefore, I agree with the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Moulding. Um, Wendy, have we managed to get a hold of? Councillor Sorry, Jack I was hoping I was hoping Councillor Moulding was going to be a bit longer because I was just looking up her number, so I haven't found her yet. <laughs> Could you um um give you me? Want a me to go minutes? to committee, Sorry. and if she, I'll go to committee, and if, <laughs> if you can get hold of her, then I'm sure the committee won't mind if we we allow her to come in and speak. Okay, okay I'll, I'll thank you, Wendy. <laughs> no worries. So next I'd like to go to um, the committee members um, and ask what they think. So first of all, I have Councillor Pook. Uh, thank you, Chair. As um, Councillor Moulding said, it's very straightforward and so far as the, um, the permission's already been granted and there's no um, highways issues, it purely is on street scene. And whilst the, um, the houses behind are rendered, um, this is seen in the, in the context of the road and the, the, the um, small dwarf wall which was removed and the, the stone walls beside. So I'm, I, I find it a shame that um, I know it's an extra cost, but it could have been made, made much more attractive and compatible with the street scene if it had been um, stoned. But I do it to accept. Uh, I, will, I will accept the um, the officer's recommendations if there's if they say there's no grounds for us to insist on it um, being built of stone. Um, I wouldn't mind um, Mr. Freeman just elaborating on that because we come across this all the time, and there seems to be a bit of inconsistency. Sometimes a stone wall, um, you know, heaven and earth has to be moved to to retain a stone wall, uh, and um, other times like this one, we seem to be quite happy not to have, a, have the stone wall. So. Um, 
if there are significant grounds which Mr. Freeman can explain, um, I'm happy to to um, support it just as rendered. But I would like to ask that question first. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Pook. Uh, Mr. Freeman, would you like to come back with that one now? You're on mute. <laughs> yes, thank you, Chair. So I was just finding myself again <laughs> on the list. Um, uh, yes, happy to, to come back on that. Um, yes, I mean, certainly where it's in a conservation area or affects the setting of a listed building or even a non-designated heritage asset, we may well in, insist that a, a stone wall is, is put in place um, to preserve the historic character of an area or, or a particular location. Um, that isn't the case here. It is not impacting on any heritage assets designated or, or undesignated. Um, in fact, arguably, I think that, you know, the, the historic, the, the wall that's historically been through this area is the low wall um, that, that you can just about see on the edge of, of, of the screen. So I'm not sure that a, a higher wall uh, of those materials would, would be any more in character than, than the rendered wall that's, that's proposed really. So uh, I think we would struggle, um, certainly struggle on appeal um, and I certainly wouldn't uh, be recommending that we insist on, on the stone facing uh, materials in this instance. Uh, I don't think there's sufficient justification for doing so. Uh, Chair, with your permission, can I just come back then? Yeah, of course. Well, taking what uh, Mr. Freeman says then, um, and especially the appeal situation, um, I'd be quite happy to propose approval. Happy to second that, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Desarum, you're on the list next. Would you like to speak? Uh, yeah, I'm happy to second this because, uh, as uh, Matthew Dalton-Aram said, the improvements will be to ease the access to the host dwelling. And we've also heard from the ward member and other speakers that the principle has been established back in April 2017, and there is no historic value or heritage value to the site. So for those reasons, I'm happy to, su to support this application. Thank you very much, Councillor Desara. Next on the list, I have Councillor Key. Thank you, uh, Chair. Um, it looks as though the tarmac has already been put there. I don't know whether that's or whether that's just um, uh, done for the actual picture. Uh, the only comment I would like is, is the actual wooden fencing, I think, would be uh, nicer um, painted in a green so that it sort of uh, um, blends in with the uh, lawns beyond. And when it's rendered, can we actually suggest uh, a color of the render? Because, I mean, um, it's like um, uh, was said earlier that we don't really want it, the color of that house, because I think that's ghastly, that uh, color there. Um, is it possible, could I ask Mr. Freeman, to actually, if we could say it's good, you know, we would like it perhaps a gray or something like that? Thank you very much, Councillor Key. I think we'll go over to Ed Freeman so he can just answer that. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, there's, there's no reason why we can't put a condition on uh, requiring them to agree a colour with us. All, all I would say, and the reason we haven't done as officers uh, recommended that, is, is that it would only be the initial colour that it's painted. We couldn't stop them from painting it a different colour at some point in the future. Um, so I kind of feel it becomes a bit pointless. Um, <laughs> because they, they could agree a colour with us, paint it that colour, and then the next day paint it a different colour. Um, so that's why we haven't recommended that, um, but you could seek to control the initial colour if that's members wish. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Freeman. Next on my list, I have uh, Councillor Gazard. Thank you, Chair. No, nothing new to add, it's all been said, thank you. Lovely. Thank you very much, Councillor Gazard. Uh, next, I have Councillor Davy. Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, I, I uh, was also going to comment on the paint colour. Um, I think, although Ed points out that it could easily be painted a different colour the next day, I think it might be quite good just to include a condition uh, that they have to agree the paint colour uh, with us so that at least the first 
painting of it um, is uh, is approved. I'm not sure I totally agree about the colour of the house, um, but uh, I haven't seen it in in its uh, full glory, only in the photograph. Um, but uh, I think it would be good if if we established the the colour at least. Uh, the first time round, and perhaps future occupants, or at another time, they might just uh, continue the same colour. And I think something fairly inoffensive would be good. I was also going to say uh, about any attempt, I think, to match the existing stonework, which looks pretty old, actually. It's very hard to do that quite often, and it, it often looks like a rather naff attempt uh, to echo the, the local vernacular um, and often rather unsuccessfully. So I don't have a problem with the rendering, but I do think we should condition the colour. Thank you very much, Councillor Davy. Um, I wonder if we could just go to the proposal, ca proposer, Councillor Pook, and seconder, Councillor Desarum, just to see what their thoughts are on that. Um, Councillor Pook, I'm why am I getting um, an echo all the time? Nobody else hearing it? Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm happy to support the recommendation as made, and I'm also happy to, to have a condition on the colouring as suggested by Councillor Davey. So if you want to do that, go ahead. Lovely. Thank you very much, Councillor Pook. So as I see no more hands raised... Um, I think we'll go over to Shirley. Sorry, thank you very much. Sorry, Councillor Desara. So no, thank you. Yeah, I would uh, support entirely what Councillor Pook has said. So thank you very much. Lovely. Thank you very much, everybody. I just check. Uh, so I see no more hands raised. We'll go over to Shirley to sum up for us. Thank you very much. Yeah. Can I just check if if you're not going to wait for um the um, Councillor Jackson indication if she's available or can I just move straight on? Uh, my colleague is just speaking to Councillor Jackson, but I, I can hear from behind me, I think she may be sending her apologies, but just bear with me a moment. I will just double check. Okay. We'll just wait a moment, everyone. No, um, Councillor Jackson, unfortunately, won't be atten um, speaking on this item. Lovely. Thanks for your confirmation, Wendy. So now if we go back over to Shirley. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Chair. Um, members, the proposal, the motion, I beg your pardon, the recommendation and the motion put forward is to approve subject to the conditions as listed in the report. And as you have heard, the mover and second have also um, proposed that a condition be applied for the colour of the render to be agreed between, and I would recommend that be with, in consultation with the chair and ward member as well. Therefore, members, when your name is called, please would you indicate whether you're in support of the motion to approve, against the motion to approve, or whether you're abstaining from the vote. Thank you. Thank you. I'll do this alphabetically. So I'll go to Councillor Bloxham first. Support, thank you. <laughs> Councillor Chamberlain. Support the motion to approve. Thank you. Councillor Davey. Support approval. Councillor Desaran. Support motion to approve. Councillor Gazard. Support. Councillor Howe. Support. Councillor Key. Approve. Councillor Lawrence. Support. Councillor Pook. Support motion to approve. Councillor Pratt. Support. Councillor Wibley. Support. Councillor Woodward. Support approval. Councillor Wright. Support, thank you. Thank you. So I can confirm the vote to approve the application has been carried. Thank you very much, Wendy. We now move on to agenda item nine, application number 21 forward slash 0546 forward slash full minor Newcourt Barton Clist Road Topsham 
pages 32 to 41. I would like to welcome to the meeting Lucy Smallwood and Daisy Self. But first of all, I will hand over to Ed to present his report. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, so, as has been said, this application relates to Newcourt Barton on Clist Road. Uh, for those that aren't familiar, Newcourt Barton is a small group, uh, a small business park uh, grouped around, uh, I believe, what were historically uh, agricultural buildings on Clist Road, um, which runs through here for people's bearing. This is Junction 30 of the M5 motorway, the Sidmouth Road, Clist St Mary Roundabout, and Clist Road runs through from there through to Topsham. The application uh, before you is effectively uh, a small extension to the Newcourt Barton Business Park to provide a gym uh, consisting of uh, a group of three storage containers in a U-shaped formation, providing a mixture of a weights area, changing facilities, uh, treatment rooms, uh, and, and a small central exercise area. Uh, if I move the slides forward, uh, you'll be able to see how this works. So, so these are uh, effectively shipping containers, storage containers around the edge uh, with this cover over the top, creating this covered area for exercise classes and activities to take place. Um, adjacent to that uh, is a small area for car parking, providing 12 car parking spaces. The site um, lies in a, in a rural location uh, in what's termed the open countryside with regard to uh, planning policy. It is outside of any built up area boundaries, indeed quite some distance remote from any built up area boundary and indeed any public transport facilities uh, or services and facilities. Um, in policy terms, it has no support from the local plan for those reasons. It is um, development in the open countryside that's not supported by the local plan. And in terms of the recently adopted Clist St George neighbourhood plan, uh, policy CSG19 of that plan does not support the extension of business parks within the neighbourhood plan area. And other policies within the plan only support agricultural farm diversification and outdoor recreation activities outside of development boundaries. On that basis, uh, there is an absence of policy support for this application and the relevant issue for members to consider is whether there are other material considerations that would outweigh the presumption against this development on policy grounds. Uh, overall, in officers' opinion, uh, there is limited landscape impact arising from this development. Our, our principal concern is uh, the policy conflict, um, the fact that this is in uh, an unsustainable location and an activity that could potentially attract substantial numbers of visitors to the site. It's understood the gym it would have in excess of 100 members who are likely to visit the site on a regular basis and be entirely reliant on public transport, um, sorry, on their own private vehicles to reach the site, creating uh, potentially quite a substantial number of vehicle movements to and from this site uh, when uses such as this should be located in more sustainable locations, in our opinion. Um, it is this harm uh, that we believe combined with uh, the conflict with policy that leads to a recommendation of refusal in this case. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Freeman. On my list, first of all, to speak, I have Lucy Smallwood. You will have three minutes to speak. I've got a statement on behalf of um, Mrs. Smallwood. Um, Lovely, which, thank you, um, Andy. Yep, okay. So the following statement reads as follow, follows. My family and I use Daisy's services throughout the past two years. Daisy provides an inclusive service across all ages and abilities. She recently provided an invaluable service to my father, which ultimately resulted in the correct diagnosis and treatment for his long-term pain. This facility will provide space to help a larger number of people while providing place for its members to exercise away from the hustle and bustle of the city centre. Its proximity to the M5 will allow its members and clients clients easy access and its own out of town location peaceful surroundings to unwind from the stresses of everyday life 
the vision for this center is not merely somewhere to work out or receive a massage, but to create a community for like-minded people to come together and form lasting friendships. The center will ooze benefits. Its setup will enable its members to train outdoors away from the usual air-conditioned gym. The cap on members will enable members to get to know one another and the coaches to have a better understanding of each member's goals. I am in full support of this application. Statement ends. Thank you very much, Wendy. Next on the list, I have Daisy Self. You will have three minutes to speak. Do we have Daisy in the meeting? Um, let me just check. We did have. Hello. Yes, she is. Ah, there you are. Welcome, Hello. Daisy. You'll have three minutes to speak. Thank you. Good morning, members. My name is Daisy Self, and I'm the founder of The Training Yard. I've been operating for eight years as a sport and exercise therapist within Devon, and over this time have built a clientele base of over 3,000 patients. Previously, I have based my business from other gyms, renting treatment room and floor space, but this is no longer sustainable due to the lack of flexibility and these facilities being unable to accommodate the diverse needs of my clients. Due to the size and space required for my business to continue to operate efficiently and to expand, it is now time to create our own facility. I've spent the last 18 months searching for a location to build the training yard with the help of commercial agents. However, available sites are very limited and most business parks are unable to meet the needs of our business as we require outside space for our unique indoor and outdoor training and wellbeing facility. Newcourt Barton is the only suitable business park with land available, but all of its existing units and yard areas at Newcourt Barton are full which is why we are proposing a small expansion to the business park on land that has no other purpose. Newcourt Barton provides the amount of land we require to create an outdoor training facility while still being related to the main business park and our client base. The site is a very accessible location and it is close to Exeter Chiefs, Exeter City Football Club, Red Bull and Yamaha, all teams which we pr are proud to currently work with regularly. Although we are seeking a gym license, the training yard aims to be a well-being centre that offers so much more than gym and exercise classes. We will continue to work with local charities, professional academies and local individuals. Such classes will include rehabilitation for lower back pain, osteoarthritis, muscular dystrophy, cerebral palsy and much more. The sustainability of the build will allow it to be accessible for everyone. Every door will be low threshold we will have disability access throughout and have the ability to adjust the layout and features daily for the individuals who come to enjoy the facility. Our business is unlike any other gym. The training yard will be an inclusive community facility benefiting the local people and businesses. National and local planning policies E5 and E7 are in place to support the needs of businesses and rural economic development. I urge you to support- remaining. I urge you to support us through granting this planning application. I would like to thank all members for their time this morning. I hope I have highlighted the importance of this location and its benefits not only to the local community, but to the growth of the health and wellbeing industry through the expansion of the training yard. Thank you. Thank you very much, Daisy. Next on my list, I have committee ward member, Councillor Martin Cow. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, this, two years ago, I probably would have recommended refusal for. That's how time's moved on, and that's my point with this. Mr Freeman has quite rightly set out officer's report that in our policies, this is unsustainable location. But we have a brand new development, a few hundred yards just up the road, part of Exeter City Council, adjoining Topsham, that is croaching further and further towards this development. On the other side, we've got the Exeter Chiefs ground, as you, I'm sure you all know. Um, alongside of the Exeter Chiefs ground, running along Old Ryden Lane and into Clist Road, is a cycle trail. So we are smack bang between 
a large scale housing development and a cycle trail associated with Exeter City. Both of them. We have the M5 a few hundred yards away. We have train at Topsham, although you wouldn't probably um, cycle or walk from the Topsham train station to this site. But with again the new developments in Exeter City Council bringing the city closer and closer to this area, it is now fully sustainable. The number of people cycling along this road is quite remarkable. And then we come to the fact this is a wasted piece of land. You can't farm it. It is tiny. And as you look at it, it is a ridiculous piece of spare land. I spoke to our to the parish council concerned, where the, who was quite literally uh, last year it was, uh, got their neighbourhood plan through and just said, the line is a few metres in the wrong place. That's all it is. This is a full site. This is a low impact thing that has great benefits to local communities. And to me, you know, years ago, yes, it wasn't sustainable. Now we're having a totally different argument. It is a sensible location. Um, and I quite agree with the applicant. E5 and E7 should make this feasible. And um, I recommend, hopefully, to get your support in approving this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Howe. Right, over to committee members. First on my list, I have Councillor Wright, please. Thank you, Chair. I totally agree with Councillor Howe's submission. Um, something I've always had difficulty in understanding is this expression of an open countryside to say that is in open countryside and unsustainable for the reasons Councillor Howe has just fully explained, in all honesty, is, is nonsense. I know this area well. I'm a regular visitor to, uh, to Sandy Park, and I regularly come up from Topsham that way to avoid the junctions and the, near the roundabout. So it's a, I hope I'm not being impolite to the other residents of the site, but when you look at it, it's, it's rather a scruffy site full of ad hoc park caravans and boats. And I think Mr. Freeman often uses the expression, what harm does it do? I think this, this will not be doing any harm. In fact, it will be tidying it up, providing a very, very valuable service, totally in support of our wishes to improve the well-being and it gives an opportunity for people to improve their health and well-being close to Exeter um, and it might even be that people who work on that site might want to use it so I have no hesitation at all in seconding Councillor Howe's proposal to approve thank you lovely thank you I'll, I'll second that No, that's what I was thinking. I was just joking. <laughs> so we've got <laughs> Councillor Wright proposing and Councillor Key seconding. That's lovely. Councillor Key, would you like to speak next? Yes, I would. In actual fact, I mean, as, as was said before, it's not a very tidy looking site. It's going to tidy it up. This word um, sort of comes up sustainable, unsustainable. I'm still, after about um, 10 or 15 years, still waiting for somebody to come up with a really good explanation of which is sustainable and which is unsustainable, because a lot of these things baffle me. But I think it's, it's going to be with what the um, uh, uh, applicants, no, not the applicant, but the, um, I think it was, yes, it was the applicant said, it's going to actually supply an awful lot of medical help to a lot of people that suffer uh, in this world today. And therefore, I have no hesitation in seconding this application. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Key. Next, I have Councillor Desara. Thank, thank you very much, Chair. For, for me, the other material considerations are, if we look at page 39, where it says the supporting information states that the proposal would provide an appropriate location for a well-established local business and that there are no alternative locations available which fulfil the specific criteria. And as we've heard today from the ward member, the ward member believes that this is the right location and that we have suitable policy support. I note that on page 37, it would appear to fail policy E5, but I do see that it 
it has some policy support from policy E7. So for those reasons, from a policy point of view and from a practical point of view, I would certainly agree with what the ward member has said. Thank you very much, Councillor Zasara. Um, next, I have Councillor Gassard, please. Thank you, Chair. Yet again, nothing new to add. Um, I, I support the application. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Gazard. Um, next on the list, I have Councillor Poot, please. Oh, thank you. The main opposition seemed to be on um, out, being outside the, outside the developed area, but looking at the plan, as um, Councillor Low, um, Howe said, it's surely almost a, a mispositioning of the, of the line because the whole is being used that that, that use at, at the moment. And the other opposition on sustainability, I think if you go to every single gym you see anywhere in towns, outside towns or anywhere, they've all got car parks um, and uh, um, people will drive to them. But this one does give very good opportunity for people to cycle to, so I'm more than happy to support it. Thank you very much. Next on my list, I have Councillor Pratt, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, this applicant is uh, trying to expand her business, and uh, I fully support this, particularly uh, in view of what is happening in the country with COVID. And uh, I, uh, I think uh, the fact that uh, the photographs show clearly what uh, an unsightly parcel of land this is, and uh, I, I recommend... Uh, uh, approval. Thank you very much, Councillor Pratt. Next on my list to speak, I have Councillor Woodward, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, policy CSG5 on page 37 refers to um, will be supported for uh, agriculture, farm diversification or outdoor recreation. And then um, we're the report on page 39 says um, this is not a typical gym but operates as an outdoor training facility. So I think there's an argument to say that it does fall within um, existing policies. But then even if that were not the case, I think the uh, mental and physical well-being benefits far outweigh um, any uh, detriment to existing policies. So I'm fully supportive of the uh, application. Thank you very much, Councillor Woodward. Next, I have on my list, Councillor Whipley, please. Hi, oh, thanks, Chair. No, it's kind of already been said. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Whipley. Next on my list, then, I have Councillor Davy, please. Um, I'm, I'm going to sound a little bit of a discordant note, I suppose. Um, Councillor Howe is quite right, you can cycle along Clist Road, um, and I have done so quite recently, and uh, it's actually a very pleasant cycle ride, apart from the amount of traffic going along it, um, with 120 members possibly accessing this several times a week. Um, I kind of feel it is going to lead to quite a large increase in traffic along that road. Um, I don't know how the um, business park is currently accessed, um, but I, I do wonder if this isn't going to lead to a, a quite a large number of vehicle movements. And for me, that is the definition of sustainability. Can you access it um, without use of a car? And as we're talking about people who need uh, therapeutic uh, um, uh, help. Um, I wonder if they're going to be capable of cycling, although I've got a bad back and I managed to cycle. It's quite good for it, actually. Um, so uh, I'm a bit conflicted about this, but I just want to send a little word of support for our officers because I think they have pointed out um, that uh, there are a number of um, policies which uh, are against this. Thank you very much, Councillor Davey. Uh, and next on my list, I have Councillor Howe, please. Thank you. Mine's is just the last point after we've had this proposed and seconded. I'd look to the proposal and seconder. Obviously, we will need to add conditions as we're going against officers. There are no conditions on this. But I would ask for a landscaping condition because our landscape officer actually says a betterment can be made um, provided we get the landscaping right as well. And I think that would be a great benefit to all. So including the gym itself. So uh, I, I ask if they would accept a landscaping condition to be put in 
as well. And obviously, Mr. Freeman's uh, will have his input. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Howe. If we go over to uh, Councillor Wright first of all, please. Can you hear me? <laughs> For the benefit of those people listening at home, unfortunately, the council chamber has the fire alarm sounding, so uh, members are just pausing a moment until it has passed. Excellent, that seems to have stopped. Sorry, everybody. Um, we'll go over to Councillor Wright, who proposed um, this first of all, to speak, please. Thank you. I understand fully the uh, the officer's desire not to go outside of what are their policies or perceived to be the policies, but I think Councillor Woodward very well summed up the, uh, the advantages for uh, recreational outdoor use, health and well-being. And if we do add the, uh, add the condition that Councillor Howe referred to, that we should have a landscaping policy, that is yet another um, indication that this is actually of a of a number of benefits this application and those benefits do give us grounds for going beyond the officer's recommendation and apparently in breach of what our policy which I think as Councillor House said are it's about time they were reviewed so nothing further to add I think all the points have been made it just needs somebody to tidy to tidy them up thank you Thank you very much, Councillor Wright. Next, I'll go to Councillor Key, and then we will go to Ed just to go through those. Yes, I fully, fully support what has actually been said by Councillor Wright. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you very much, Councillor Key. We'll go over to Ed Freeman now, if that's OK, then, please. Um, thank you, Chair. Just, uh, I just wanted to pick up on a couple of points that, that were raised in terms of, well, factual points, really. Um, just, just to be clear, the... Um, footpath that uh, Councillor Howe referred to in Exeter City Council's area is actually off the bottom of, of the screen. It's about 700 metres south of this site where a residential development is going in, which introduces a, a, a footpath alongside uh, Cliss Road. Um, so that's down there. The hotel he referred to is, is here and there is a brief cycle lane along this section of Old Ryden Lane. Otherwise, it's, it's on road cycling all, all the way through. The other thing I would, would say from, from my own experience in terms of, of the gym that's located at Sandy Park, the vast majority of users of, of that gym do drive there and that car park is <laughs> to that facility is, is full uh, at all busy times of the gym, despite the fact that you can actually walk through to Digby and Sutton Railway Station there. Um, so I, I wouldn't like members to assume that because it's a gym, these are, are people that would regularly cycle and, and, and walk to a facility. They are generally busy people who choose to go to the gym because they don't have time to go out and cycle and, 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 and walk as much as they may, may like. Um, so just to make members aware of, of, of those points, but I, I obviously acknowledge the uh, mood of the committee is, is towards approving this application. I think the issue of conditions was raised and if members are minded to approve the application, I would ask that uh, delegated authority be given to officers to impose relevant conditions. Uh, as Councillor Howard said, I think a landscaping condition would be appropriate. There would be benefits uh, in, in terms of providing some landscaping to uh, give an appropriate setting to this development. Uh, I think uh, off the top of my head, I would also think it would be appropriate to uh, try and condition the materials and finish of of the the units uh, i appreciate the shipping containers but they can be painted or colored in in an appropriate uh materials and colors to to minimize their their impact uh, i think the other thing we would need to control is is the use of of the site um uh but uh, if members are minded subject to, to those uh, and other conditions being delegated to officers uh, i think that would be useful to ensure we have appropriate control in this case thank you chair 
thank you very much, Mr. Freeman. Um, I can't see any more committee members wanting to speak on the subject. Um, so we'll go over to Shirley to sum that up, please. Thank you, Chair. Yes, members, you have a motion to approve this application, contrary to officer uh, recommendations, as the benefit to the community outweighs the harm to the countryside, and also with delegation of relevant conditions, especially the landscaping and materials and finish and control of use of the site. Members, please, when your name is called, would you indicate whether you're in support of the motion to approve? against the motion to approve or whether you're abstaining from the vote. Thank you. Councillor Bloxham. Support approval. Councillor Chamberlain. Support approval. Councillor Davy. Against approval. Councillor Dasaran. Support motion to approve. Councillor Gazard. Support approval. Councillor Howe. Support approval. Councillor Key. Support approval with conditions. Councillor Lawrence. Support approval. Councillor Pook. Support approval. Councillor Pratt. Support approval. <laughs> Councillor Wibley. Support approval. Councillor Woodward. Support approval. Councillor Wright. Support approval. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. The vote to approve the application has been carried. Thank you very much, Wendy. Next, we move on to agenda item 10, application 21 forward slash 07 09 forward slash full, Smith and Hayes Farm, Luppet, pages 42 to 52. I would like to welcome to the meeting the applicant, Kate Hollier. But first of all, I would like to go over to Ed to present his report, please. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, so this application at Smith and Hayes Farm Luppet is for uh, the erection of one glamping cabin uh, for holiday let purposes. Um, you can hopefully see on your screen a, a map of the area which shows you Smith and Hayes Farm in the center located uh, just to the southeast of, of Beacon, east of Wick, and sort of northwest of Moncton. Uh, so very much in a, in a rural open countryside location within the Blackdown Hills area of outstanding natural beauty. Uh, the application is for the erection of a glamping cabin uh, shaded in, in red on the plan, uh, with the area adjacent uh, marked in red. As you can see, uh, it, it forms would form part of a, a collection of existing buildings. Uh, it just kind of forms a small hamlet uh, along this area, but it does, does not form part of a wider farm or, or, or rural business. It is a, a residential use adjacent to the site. Um, so you can see in closer detail the relationship with the adjacent buildings, uh, proposed access driveway with parking. Uh, and, and some planting along the boundary. Let's just go to the next slide. You can see uh, the unit it, itself uh, is quite a modest, um, described as a glamping unit um, and basically provides uh, a modest level of accommodation uh, with a sort of uh, decking veranda area uh, that wraps around two sides of the unit. Um, and it basically provides um, a living area with kitchenette, uh, a double bedroom at the end and, and bathroom in the central area there. Um, the issue with this application really is one of principle, again, uh, not dissimilar in some respects to the, the previous application where issues of sustainability uh, arise. Uh, and, and really, in this case, again, it's, it's putting a, a use in a location which involves uh, people visiting the site and obviously traveling from it, which is in an unsustainable location and remote from basic services and facilities that they may need. 
As a result, the policies in the local plan seek to site new holiday accommodation within the main tourist resorts within the district or, or as expansions of existing holiday parks where services and facilities are available. Um, yeah, an exception to that is, is, is within the local plan is the support for rural diversification and conversion of rural buildings. Um, but this development before you today is neither of those. As I say, there is no farming activity. It is not a rural business. Um, and this is a new build uh, in a remote location in a protected landscape. Um, so it does not have uh, support within the policies of your local plan. Um, in terms of the landscape impacts, this is relatively uh, limited, albeit it is a protected landscape and so particularly sensitive to change. Uh, there are acknowledged limited economic benefits highlighted in the report, um, but overall it is considered that this, the sustainable, sustainability of the location um, means that there is uh, a presumption against this development within our policies. The question therefore becomes whether there are other material considerations that should outweigh our policy presumption against such developments. Uh, we are not aware of any from the application that's been made. Um, and as I say, while we acknowledge the economic benefits, we feel those are very modest and would not outweigh the harm that we've identified in terms of sustainability. As a result, the application is recommended for refusal. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ed. Next on my list, I have the applicant, Katie Hollier, to speak. I see that she's here. You will have three minutes to speak. Hi there, everyone. Thank you for letting me speak. Um, I'm going to read from my notes. Um, we've owned Smith & Hayes Farm for nine years. Seven years ago, we converted um, a barn on the property uh, which was a crumbly old barn into a high-end holiday cottage. It's done really well. Occupancy is around 80% on climbing and we've won awards for it in the Southwest and also nationally. What we wanted to do was to build on the success of, of, of this rural business by adding um, this wooden glamping cabin. Um, it's a modest addition. It would help us to grow the business on a small scale and would mean we were able to employ two local people who would then work across the holiday cottage cabin and outdoor space for maintenance. Uh, due to the high quality of our accommodation, we attract a clientele who come to Devon with money to spend in local farm shops, restaurants, pubs, attractions and businesses. We've spent a long time designing the cabin to ensure that the materials used are representative of those used in existing buildings on our property and in the surrounding area. The design Design is very much bespoke, so we've been able to specify um, the curved roof that you can see. Um, and this mirrors the Dutch barn, which is on our property. Um, the cabin will be incredibly low impact and any screening needed will be planted with local species of trees, shrubs and hedging. The cabin that we're proposing would be freestanding. So instead of a concrete base, um, which obviously is harmful to the environment, the cabin would sit on ground screws, meaning that it is completely removable if ever needed and with minimal impact on the landscape itself. The chair and vice chair of our parish council took time to come and visit the site. They acknowledged the careful positioning that we'd selected and agreed that as, as a modest addition, the existing business, it would work well. They were happy to support our application. Um, Paragraph 83 of the National Planning Policy Framework states that planning decisions should enable the sustainable growth and expansion of all types of businesses in rural areas, both through the conversion of existing buildings, but also with well-designed new ones. We have spent an awful lot of time making sure that, that this is well-designed and in keeping with, with other buildings, and we, we really do want to highlight that. Um, also, in the East Devon local plan, um, it does say that... Um, the scale, level and intensity of development should be compatible with the character of the surrounding area. Including 30 seconds the remaining. Okay, thank you. Um, I will skip in that case to the end. In conclusion, our application is a modest addition to a high quality, successful local tourism business. It would have minimal impact on the surrounding landscape, road networks and environment. We are hoping to hire out e-bikes so that they wouldn't be using the roads any more than they absolutely needed to. Um, and we're happy to remove the decking area if this is deemed inappropriate. I hope this helps um, and happy to answer any questions. 
Thank you very much, Katie Hollier. Um, next on the list, I have ward member, Councillor Brown, please. Good morning, everybody. Um, there is already a holiday unit on this site. This is for an additional unit to expand this successful holiday business. It is less than half a mile from the main A30 at Moncton, where midweek you can get a daily bus service into Honiton. The development would take place within a sensitive landscape and within settings of designated heritage ashate. The reports state that there is no arm is considered to arise. All of the accommodation relies on private transport, but traffic movements are far less than residential, as mentioned by officers on many occasions in the past. It has no impact on the Grade 2 listed building, and the provisional recommended states that the proposal is acceptable. There is support in the local community, and businesses of this type usually support other local independent businesses. We should promote tourism in East Devon. As stated, the, next, the NPPF paragraph 83 states planning policies and decisions should enable the sustainable growth and expansions of all type of businesses in rural areas and support tourism and leisure, which respect the character of the countryside, which this proposal does. There are economic benefits for the whole of East Devon from this proposal, and as such, I recommend this committee views this application favourably. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Cal uh, Councillor Brown. Next, we move over to Ward Member uh, Councillor King, please. Yes. Thank, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I mean, I endorse everything that um, Councillor Brown has said. I mean, as you can see, it is a portable, removable um, asset uh, that can uh, easily be sort of taken away if uh, not needed. He mentioned that the uh, there is public transport within half a mile. Within a mile, another extra half a mile of that, uh, there are two cafes and a farm shop. So uh, that uh, it is sustainable. And I mean, in actual fact, uh, for most of that, once they get onto the main road on the A30, there is a pavement that can be walked on to these two uh, um, businesses. So um, uh, it certainly would not be uh, inaccessible for it. Um, it's, it can be very, very... Uh, uh, camouflage there it's um, the uh, hedges around there um, it's very very um, uh, built up around there with with hedges and therefore I cannot see any problem at all with this um, if it was a permanent dwelling then uh, then I would uh, certainly sort of not be able to support it but as it's a temporary dwelling as you can see um, nothing's being spoilt and it's going to enhance the uh, development of this um, business. And it's what we need actually in the southwest here and in East Devon, because if only you knew the traffic on the A30 near where I live, then it is absolutely horrendous. But no, I fully support this application and I would go for approval on it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Councillor Key. Um, now I shall go over to the committee to speak. And first on the list, I have Councillor Desara. Thank, thank you very much, Chair. Um, I, I have listened very intently to the arguments put forward. And for me, I have found other material considerations as we were asked to look at. Um, I would support uh, Councillor Key's uh, motion to approve. Um, and I particularly feel that what I've heard, para, para 83 of the NPPF would appear to support this. And there are other, is, other issues as raised on page 50, where it says, in this instance, the choice of location of the cabin has been close to, chosen to minimize the potential impact on the setting of the heritage assets. And I also feel that um, as we have a climate emergency, as we all are aware, that we have bikes on page 50, as it says. It is advisable that bikes will be available for guests to borrow. So I think that is also um, 
that that is also very a very positive um, a positive thing to have that you you've got uh, public bike transport to counterbalance the need to use cars and other vehicles so i think from what i've heard we've got very very positive reasons so i would be happy to second what the ward member has said assuming the ward member is proposing it Can I just go back to Councillor Key just to confirm that you are proposing that? Yes, I am proposing approval. Yes. Thank you very much, Councillor Key. So we have a proposal from Councillor Key and seconded by Councillor Dasarum. Thank you very much. We'll now move on to the next speaker, which I have is Councillor Woodley, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, in terms of this being sustainable and eco-friendly, and we're talking about uh, having a bus service uh, half a mile away, which is what, one every hour, one every two hours. Um, let's make no mistake, people who come and use this will not be using the bus service. They will, they will be driving. Um, Councillor Key talked about traffic on local roads, mentioning the A30. This isn't going to, it's, yeah, one or two cars. It's not going to make it any better. Um, uh, Mr. Freeman earlier on uh, compared it to the previous uh, application that we heard. This doesn't have the mental health and well-being effects that the previous application had. And given that the officer has pointed out as well that it, it contravenes um, so many policies or it can't be made to fit in with so many local plans and, um, and neighbourhood plans, um, I, I don't think I can support um, acceptance of this. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Wibley. Next on my list, I have Councillor Pratt, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I do support this, uh, this application. Yet again, this is another business we want to expand. And I have already said in the last application that we heard that uh, this is a time for expansion of businesses, particularly in the tourist trade. And uh, Strategy 33 does give a general approval for promoting tourism in East Devon. And in my view, this uh, cabin is located in an area which uh, is not going to cause any harm to the environment or the, uh, the, 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 the views of the, uh, the area. So uh, I, I'm going to support... Uh, the uh, proposals of uh, Councillor Key in this case. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Pratt. Uh, next on my list, I have Councillor Wright, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I understand some of the arguments about sustainability, you know, lack of services, and those that are very, very appropriate when we're talking about a residential property for full-time living in, where you need to have access to schools for kids, you need access to medical services for residents, and you need access to other services if you want to live in a premises full-time. That is not the case here. It is a holiday location, and we know that people who come on holiday come to very often to be quite self-sufficient. It's clearly a sustainable business because the applicant told us that her holiday cottage on the same, in, on generally the same location, is more or less fully booked. So that clearly indicates there is a demand, uh, that it's a very, very sensitively constructed building. I note that the applicant is offering uh, the provision of bikes. A lot, one of the last places in the world I would cycle along would be the A30. Um, because I don't think it's a very cycle-friendly road. So I totally support what Councillor Key has said, and I will definitely be supporting this application. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Wright. Next on the list, I have Councillor Pook, please. Well, thank you. Very briefly, I support the application for all the reasons given. This is um, there are policy issues where it's maybe non-compliant, but also we have to look at you know the sustainability of the business, and maintaining of business. These be low-impact visitors, um, and it's a demand that needs to be filled. And let's fill it in East Devon rather than somewhere else. So I fully support the application. Thank you very much, Councillor Pook. Next, I have Councillor Howell, please. 
Thank you very much. I've got a question for Mr. Freeman, I suppose. Um, the applicant has made out that this won't have any foundations effectively. So if we approve this, um, but the holiday use ceases, can the can we condition that it could be removed afterwards so it doesn't become a permanent dwelling? Um, so that's question one. And the second question I have is on uh, economic benefits. For a small business, growing it, adding another unit is a large economic benefit for that small business. But I know in our terms, you know, we would give it more credence if there were 10 such units being applied for at this time. And it's that balancing act between, you know, when an economic benefit is, well, more severe or more beneficial for the whole community or the business itself. And it's drawing that line. So I'm trying to understand if this was a larger site, Mr. Freeman, um, you know, as in they were putting in for 10, would that sway the economic benefit? Because that would obviously then be more harmful to the environment around it and particularly the AOMB, of which I think one unit for one business is, is a good then compromise sort of thing. So I'd just like those questions answered, please, Mr. Freeman. We'll go over next to Mr. Freeman to answer those questions. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, in terms of the first point, Councillor Hale, hey, <laughs> Councillor Howe made, apologies, <laughs> can't speak today. Um, with regard to, to permanence, I mean, the applicants have applied for it as the erection of the glamping cabin. Um, so we've taken the view that this is a permanent structure and development in terms of erecting it on the land. They have not applied for it as a change of use of land for the siting of it, as you would if it was a mobile home or uh, something of that ilk. Um, so on that basis, I don't think we could uh, require it to be removed at any point in, in the future. It is being considered as a, as a permanent structure that's being erected on the site. Um, I think the applicant did say it was bespoke in terms of its design, which rather suggested it would be constructed on the site rather than something that's um, a standard uh, factory built design that's then uh, brought to the site on the back of a truck and then just stationed here. So um, I would take the view that based on the application we got before us, it's, it's, it's the erection of the structure and, and not a temporary uh, thing for the, for the siting of it. In, in terms of the economic benefits, I think we, we've assessed the economic benefits in terms of the economic benefits to the district rather than to the, the business. Um, what I would say, though, uh, and I, I take Council House point about um, more units on the site, it, it is the principle that, that, that as officers we are concerned about here. Uh, I think we would acknowledge that the, the harm arising from one small unit like this is, is modest. But in, in principle, once you accept one, uh, it's going to be very difficult in future if they come in for 10 or, or, or 20. Um, admittedly, we will get to a point where the landscape impact will be a, a deciding factor, particularly given that it's an, an AONB. Um, but there is a principle at, at, at stake here, which is the purpose of having the policies that we have um, and, and, and seeking to maintain that line uh, when it comes to uh, developments like this in very remote rural locations. Um, I hear what some members have said about support being gained from uh, national guidance, but I, I firmly believe that that refers when it refers to rural areas of locations such as villages um, where you have a range of services and facilities and public transport is available, not uh, completely remote locations like this away from those services or facilities. Uh, while members have been speaking, I've been, been checking in terms of bus services in the area because I wasn't aware of those that the ward members have referred to. Uh, I'm struggling to find details of those, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure any services are going to be very limited in terms of their frequency, uh, given my knowledge of, of rural bus services in the district and very limited in terms of where they go. Um, so I do find it highly unlikely that uh, users of this facility would, would make use of the bus services. Uh, in the area um, and, and so I think we need to be careful in, in terms of the principle here uh, rather than necessarily the specifics of how minor this development it is. There, there is a, a principle at stake here um, that we just need to be, be mindful of I think in terms of um, 
well, there's no such thing as precedent, um, it, 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 it can make it difficult to, to argue against future developments. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Freeman. Next on my list, I have Councillor Woodward to speak, please. Thank you, Chair. Just um, a comment on sustainability. Um, something to consider that those that might use this type of clamping might be trying to use also an, an electric vehicle. And the more the council we can encourage electric vehicle charging points, we may well have more electric vehicle users and therefore have less impact on, on the environment and uh, help the issue of sustainability. So um, I just make that as a comment that we might want to do more about electric charging points. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Woodhall. Next, I have Councillor Davey, please. Thank you, Chair. And despite what I said about the uh, previous application, uh, I'm going to support this one because I think we do need to support tourism in the area. I think there's going to be a huge increase uh, in, in people taking holidays within this country. Um, and we have to accept that most visitors are going to arrive by car. But as Councillor Wright pointed out, they're not using that car to access schools and services. They might do a shopping trip every few days, um, but it, it, it's likely to generate one journey per day, I think. And I mean, I know if I go somewhere, if I am using a car, I'll go out for the day, I'll come back uh, to my accommodation. Um, and uh, it is relatively close to Honiton. Um, that might almost be uh, cyclable, actually. I don't think you'd have to go along the A30. I think you, you can actually uh, access it without. Um, yes, it's it's only one cabin now, and, and, and I would hope they might actually add a few more uh, later. It's already been pointed out by the applicant that this uh, could generate employment uh, for a couple of people. So I think there are economic benefits. Um, and I think we do need to support small businesses and particularly in tourism like this. So I'm very happy to uh, support this one. Thank you very much, Councillor Davey. Next, I have Councillor Key, please. Yes, uh, just to uh, clarify a couple of points in actual fact, Councillor Wright said about uh, cycling on the A30. In actual fact, around that area, the Luppet, the Apotry area, there is an absolute web of lanes that um, are very quiet and would be ideal for that. Yes, as was just mentioned, there is um, a road, uh, two roads in actual fact, that would go into Honiton without even touching the A30. So uh, if anybody wanted to cycle there, I mean, and it is also within walkable distance, which I know people do from there um, because it is uh, nice and quiet. So um, that was just to clarify a couple of points. The other point is this is actually set on two runners and in actual fact, could be removable if ever it was not wanted as a holiday let. Thank you very much, Councillor Key. Uh, next, we go over to Councillor Lawrence, please. Councillor Lawrence, you're on mute. They can't hear you. Sorry. Um, yeah, I, I support the idea that um, we... we help people to develop the holiday holiday industry but i'm also very supportive of, of councillor woodward's comment that um surely something like this might be uh, or might have a, a charging point for people who arrive in electric cars because otherwise they've, they've, they've got no means of, of of charging them up unless they go to another unless they go to the town and charge it up by a supermarket so could we put on um something like this where there's an application for in a, in a rural area, that they do have an electric charging point. Thank you very much, Councillor Lawrence. Next, we go to uh, Councillor Whibley, please. Um, Councillor Lawrence has just um, said what I was going to say. I would be happier to support it if there was some sort of um, provision for. Um, electric cars as it stands or elect, an electric charge point as it stands I, I maintain my previous view 
Thank you very much, Councillor Lee. It would be if we go to Councillor Key um, and Councillor Desar and whether you would like to put that in as a condition or if we go to Councillor Key first, please. No, I don't. I don't think you. Well, as there, if they're going having electric bikes there, there's possibly bound to be, um, you know, uh, charging places for that. But I don't think you can actually stipulate that they've got to have um, an electric point just for one one dwelling or one one holiday let. I think that's sort of going over the top a little bit when you've got very close at hand Honiton here with uh, a lot of electrical charging points. So uh, I, I wouldn't like to, um, I mean, I don't know what the um, facilities would be for actually um, charging electric bikes, whether that would still be the same as for cars. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Key. Let's go over to Councillor Wright, please. Yes, as the electric uh, car point has been raised, I, I think I can help there. I've got to say my comments about cycling along the A30 was having seen Councillor Phil twist cycling along there very often. That's not a very pretty sight. So um, I might have had my views covered by this. Um, I can say that the cost of installing a seven kilowatt charging point at this location would be around 800 pounds in fact i've just had one installed for my electric car and in fact it was a very good electrician from the from the duncan's well honiton area who did it so it might not be uh, something we can we can insist on but it might very well be that it's something that when we are considering applications it's something we do include i know that our larger campsites and caravan sites have got charging points and I know there's a charging point at uh, Honiton at Tesco's which they can charge up for free but those charging points only put 30 miles an hour in a car whereas if someone was to travel down here to 200 miles or so they could put that uh, that back in their car if it was plugged in overnight to a uh, to a charging station so I think there is some merit in that and it might be something we might consider for future applications as a as a policy issue. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Wright. And the last person I have to speak on my list is Councillor Davey, please. Yeah, I just wanted to come back on a couple of things. Um, electric bike charging is totally different from electric car charging. Um, the uh, charger for an, uh, for an electric bike has just run off a 13 amp socket um, whereas a car charger needs uh, something dedicated and I think it's going to be tricky to <clears throat> insist on this um, in this particular case because um, unfortunately there are a variety of different chargers um, depending on what kind of car you've got so they would need a kind of universal uh, charging point um, and I'm not sure how easy it is uh, to install one of those and uh, Councillor Wright has probably got one dedicated for his car I'm, I'm not sure how much uh, these cost um, Andrew Ennis probably knows because uh, we are putting them in, in council car parks um, but I think that the fact that there's nearby charging um, hopefully would uh, would do that. But yep, I think Councillor Wright wants to come back on that one, so I'll keep quiet. I was just going to say, for, for the last couple of years now, um, there is basically just one charging point, just one type of socket, um, which is a general seven kilowatt socket, and you can actually park an elect, you can charge an electric car off an ordinary 13 amp supply, but that only puts in about seven miles an hour. So it would, it would take someone 20 odd hours to charge a car if they'd come down here from London. I know that because I nick my son's electricity when I go up there and charge my car. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Wright. Um, so we'll go over to um, Ed Freeman now uh, so that he can go through some of the things that have been raised. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Chair. I just wanted to pick up on uh, a couple of the issues I raised. One was um, this issue about electric car charging points. Um, I, I don't think it would be reasonable to condition a requirement to have, have a charging point. Um, but one thing that occurs to me, 
you could do given that it's it's not just that issue that's been raised i think the applicants um talked about um electric bikes being available uh the world members referred to, to bus routes and things um is is you could require the submission of a travel plan um which would then perhaps require um the operators of the unit to provide details to uh users of it about how they can access it by sustainable means uh what uh footpaths and cycleways are available in the area to encourage them to uh explore the area in using sustainable means they could then propose the electric bikes uh, option and it, it also gives them the option to consider members uh, comments about electric car charging facilities and, and offer that as part of the travel plan if if they're so minded to do so i think that would be a more reasonable approach than than requiring uh the electric car charging points as i, I have no idea what would be in, involved in this location um in terms of uh, other conditions, um, I think if members are minded to approve the application, we would need conditions controlling the use of uh, the uh, facility, uh, the materials and finish, uh, and some landscaping details um, to ensure that we minimise the landscape impact of, of this on, on the wider area of outstanding natural beauty. Um, I would, however, ask it uh, before members move to the vote. I think, for the record, it would be good if the um, proposer could could just clarify the the reasons for departing from policy. In in this case, as I said from the outset, um, this would be a departure from policy, and we do need to be clear about the other material considerations that are deemed to outweigh policy in this case. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Freeman. So we'll go to the proposer. Just. Um for him to comment on those please councillor key i mean the thing is i mean it's um it's it's in the actual um i don't think the luffet uh, parish plan is actually i think it's with east devon at the moment but it does actually support um this this type of thing to actually uh, go ahead um and uh, i think with regard to uh, e16 which is proposals for holiday or overnight accommodation and associated facilities i think that would cover uh, basically this this actual uh, application thank you very much councillor key councillor disarm did you want to add anything to that as a seconder uh, no i'm happy to agree with what councillor key has said Although I note that we were advised by uh, officers to consider the requirement of submission of a travel plan. So I don't know whether that's something Councillor Key might wish to consider. I'm, uh, I throw it back to you just so we've covered all the points raised. Yes, I support that. I mean, I would think in actual fact, if they've got a holiday let already, they would actually uh, be doing that anyway for a holiday plan. So yes, happy to, uh, to support that. So we'll go. Yeah. So we'll just go over to Mr. Freeman, if that's okay, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Sorry to, to come come back again, but I just on on the reasons, I just wanted to be clear because Councillor Key seemed to be suggesting that it was compliance with Policy E16 in the local plan in his reasons. Uh, as I think we've been clear as as officers that it, it, it doesn't fall within the remit of policy E16, um, which relates to the conversion uh, of existing structures and, and buildings in this uh, case. And this is clearly isn't a, a conversion. So I'm just nervous about that being a reason for approving this application because that's that's factually uh, not correct. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Freeman. I think we need to go back to the proposer to come up with some reasons for that. Bear with me one moment. We'll go to Councillor Howe just for a moment. And it's another question for Mr. Freeman, I suppose. And I just want to verify after the discussions of whether this is temporary or not. And obviously, quite rightly, you've pointed out it's been applied for permanence, but the implications are it's it is not a permanent structure in the form of it doesn't have foundations and everything else. 
I'm just asking, is this the right application? Um, should it be, if it was treated as the uh, more mobile caravan stroke whatever application, would we be viewing it slightly differently? Um, because if it is, that may be a way around the current problems we have, Mr. Freeman. Thank you very much, Councillor Howell. Mr. Freeman, would you like to come back to that? Uh, yes, Chief Chair, I, I don't think it makes a difference to the, the principal issue here, which is one of the sustainability of this location. Uh, the application should, if that were the case, be on the basis of it being a change of use of land for the siting of uh, the glamping cabin. Um, so I'm assuming, uh, and I would need to do some further research into um, the application, but I'm assuming from the form in which it's been made that the intention is to construct and build it on, on the site and there will be some, some permanence, at least in terms of potentially the way it connects into services and facilities um, or, or, or is fixed to the ground. Um, I, as always, we have to consider the application that's before us. Um, and so I, I think you need to consider the application on the basis upon which it's been made, uh, which is that uh, its construction is, is development uh, and the applications for its construction uh, and that it would be a permanent structure on the site. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Yeah. Freeman. I, oh, Councillor Key. Yeah, strategy 33, promotion of tourism and East, uh, in East Devon. Um, and strategy 46, landscape conservation and enhancement, that is all covered in the actual um, recommendations that we would want um, to go with it. Um, E5, small scale, um, no, sorry, not E5. Um, E4, rural diversification, because that is an actual fact mentioned in the executive summary, that it would be rural um, uh, diversification. Perhaps I could help, Chair. Um, in, in, in terms of the report, I think as officers, we've been quite clear that it doesn't comply with any policies in the local plan. In, in terms of the rural diversification policy, that needs to be linked to an existing rural business or farm, uh, which isn't the case here. So we didn't consider that it was a rural diversification. Um, I, I, what I'm seeking, perhaps if, if uh, Councillor Key is still minded to uh, move approval of this application is, is not so much a, a policy, um, because as I say, I don't think it complies with any of the policies in the local plan, uh, but other material considerations that he considers outweighs policy um, is, is the point I'm making. And we just need to be very clear for the record as to what those reasons are, uh, but they I'm not necessarily suggesting they are policies because I don't think uh, it complies with policy. Um, but members have discussed things like uh, the economic benefits in, in particular that um, members may wish to refer to. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Freeman. Councillor Key, are you ready to come back or shall I move over to Councillor Woodward first? Um, yes, I mean, strategy 33 is the promotion of tourism in East Devon of the local plan. Um, and uh, policy E16, I think, which was the one that I actually said, was proposal for over an associated facilities deals with new tourist accommodation proposals. Right, that's e what E16 is actually on the um, uh, papers that we've got today. Yeah, sorry, did you, you wanted to go? If, if I may, Chair, policy, policy E16 relates to new tourist accommodation um, in, in sustainable lo locations. In terms of rural locations, it, I believe, from memory, it only relates to conversions. Um, so uh, this is why we're saying we don't think it complies with that policy. Um, I, I guess members could take a contrary view to that, but... Um, I'm just conscious of if there were a need to defend this decision, I think it would be wise to refer to other material considerations outside of policy. Thank you very much, Mr. Freeman. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Freeman. I'm now going to move over to Count. Can I speak, Woodward, um, please? Councillor Woodward. Thank you, Chair. Uh, there's two comments to make. One is that um, although there may be no strict compliance with policies, um, but there are economic benefits, um, even though they referred to as being um, small scale. But nevertheless, we've heard that there might be employment of two people, uh, which I think is quite a considerable consideration for East Devon. Um, so I think there are economic benefits which out would outweigh uh, policy deficiencies. But on policy um, aspects, the Lepit Neighbourhood Plan Policy ND7 uh, refers to holiday cottages and that there'll be support within that for lodges, caravans, and similar glamping and camping. So I think we could also call upon ND7 to uh, in support in addition to the economic benefits. Thank you very much, Councillor Woodward. I believe Councillor Brown wanted to come in um, and say something. Councillor Brown, are you there? Yes, I am now. Sorry, I was on mute. That's um, okay. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, the, the NPPF paragraph 83 states planning policies and decisions should enable the sustainable growth and expansions of all type of businesses in rural areas. Surely that covers it. Thank you very much, Councillor Brown. I'm just going to go to Councillor Gazard, who's got his hand up as well, just in case we've got an accumulation of things that we can take to Mr Freeman then. So, Councillor Gazard, please. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, can't, I can't think of any policies, but I mean, the reasons why I would support it is that um, it's providing new and new employment on, uh, on the site, as we've heard. It, it will um, enhance tourism in East Devon and it will assist the growth of, of a, a local business, if that helps. Thank you very much, Councillor Kazard. Um, next, I have Councillor Desarum. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm still happy to support this, and I feel that uh, the other material considerations that we need to look at are, are the fact that we are getting a high-end holiday cottage, as the applicant said, with high-end uh, clients, which again is promotion of tourism. And, and I think, as we've heard, there are uh, minor economic benefits to the employment of two people. So I think tourism and the economy are, are the material considerations which would outweigh this, this uh, policy problem. Thank you very much, Councillor Desarum. We'll go back to Mr. Freeman now, please. Um, well, thank you, Chair. I mean, from my point of view, I, I'm now clear that um, well, my understanding is that the, the motion to approve is on the basis of the economic benefits uh, of the proposal, which are considered to outweigh uh, the, the policy ob objections. Um, so if that's members, members' wish, then uh, I think that's clear for the record. Thank you. Councillor Key would just like to come back in a moment. Yes, I mean, on the papers here, it says within the National Planning Policy Framework, MPPPF, paragraph 83 states, planning policies and decisions should enable the sustainable growth and expansion of all types of business in rural areas and support sustainable rural tourism and leisure developments that benefit the businesses in rural areas, community communities and visitors and which respect the character of the countryside. Thank you very much, Councillor Key. Mr Freeman, do you need to come back at all? No, I, I'm clear on members' reasons now, thank you. Thank you very much. So I'll move us over to Mr Shaw now, please, to sum up. Thank you. I'm sorry to uh, to go on, but could Councillor Key and Councillor Disarum please confirm that they are happy to delegate conditions to officers in consultation with the chair and ward members um, when this has gone through? Confirm. Yes. Thank Confirmed. You very much. Delighted. Thank you very much, members. You've heard that you have a motion to approve this matter with the conditions delegated. Please, when your name is called, would you indicate whether you're in support of the motion to approve, you're against the motion to approve, or whether you're abstaining from the vote? Thank you. 
Councillor Bloxham. Support the motion to approve. Councillor Chamberlain. Support the motion to approve. Councillor Davy. Support approval. Councillor Dasaram. Support the motion to approve. Councillor Gazard. Support approval. Councillor Howe. Support. Thank you. Councillor Key. Support approval. Councillor Lawrence. Support approval. Councillor Pook. Support approval. Councillor Pratt. Support approval. Councillor Wibley. Against approval. Councillor Woodward. Support approval. Councillor Wright. Support approval, thank you. Thank you, the vote to approve. The application has been carried. Thank you very much, Wendy. Members, we're just going to take a 10 minute break so you can stand, stretch, do what you need to do. Um, it's now quarter to 12, so come back at 5 to 12, Wendy, if that's okay, please. Yep, okay, we'll put the slide up. Thank you very much. We've got to sort out these policies.
chair. Can you let me know when you're ready? Okay, I'm ready whenever you are. Shall I start? Uh, not yet, Sally. So I was just um, asking the chair if she was ready oh, to I'm begin sorry. the meeting. Okay. Okay. Yeah, all members, all members are present back at their, their desks, Wendy. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Over to you. Good afternoon and welcome back to our planning meeting. We now are on agenda item 11, application number 21 forward slash 0860 forward slash full minor the Lanthorns Sheldon Honiton pages 53 to 60. I would like to welcome to the meeting the applicant Sally Quinn but first of all I would like to go to Mr Freeman to present his report please. Uh, thank you chair so this application relates to property known as the Lanthorns in the village of Sheldon um, so just for members awareness, uh, you can see on the plan, uh, plan of Sheldon, uh, a small village, uh, located in the countryside, um, nearest larger settlement is, is Dunk as well with the main nearest town, Honiton. This application relates to a, a building that was approved, I think in 2014 as an annex to the existing house and previously occupied by uh, elderly parents uh, and uh, the applicants are now looking for an alternative use for that space which has subsequently become available. Um, so the proposal is to convert that into a holiday let. Um, the main issue with this application relates to its location uh, and whether that is a sustainable location for a use of this type. Uh, the policies that are relevant to this are referred to in pages 56 and 57 in the report, uh, and you will see that requirements of those policies relate variously to development needing to be located close to a range of accessible services and facilities to meet the everyday needs of residents uh, and accessible on foot, uh, cycle and public transport. Um, and, and those are officers are concerns and why we believe this would be a departure from policy because Sheldon has a very limited range of uh, services and, and facilities as has been tested on appeal uh, in 2017 uh, where tourist accommodation was proposed in range of holiday lodges on land about 100 metres to the southwest of, of this particular site and the inspector considered the sustainability credentials of Sheldon as a settlement and we've quoted uh, a large section of the inspector's thoughts on these issues on the top of page 58 in members report. Uh, you'll see that the inspector refers to Sheldon being a very small settlement uh, with a church, uh, but lacks a shop, public house or bus services. Um, he refers to it being a considerable distance from Honiton uh, as the nearest town um, and uh, the surrounding road network in the immediate vicinity consisting mainly of narrow unlit country lanes. Based on the character of those lanes, he was concerned they would not promote pedestrian or cyclist usage, particularly when dark. And it follows that visits to shops for provisions, to restaurants, public houses for meals and to the local attractions would inevitably be by car. Um, and uh, it's these issues that uh, really concern officers with regard to this application. And we feel in terms of consistency with that decision and view taken by the inspector, um, that this application is, is unacceptable uh, fundamentally in terms of uh, its location. I would, however, say that we do acknowledge that there are some limited economic benefits, much like with the previous application. Uh, and in this case, um, we acknowledge that uh, it is at least conversion of an existing building within a settlement um, and there is no uh, particular landscape concerns. Um, but as I say, uh, we feel this would be a departure from policy. Um, with the harm as identified in terms of the sustainability of the site and location, access to services and facilities, which would make occupants of this holiday let entirely reliant on the private car to access basic services and facilities. Um, and based on that harm and the lack of other material considerations that we're aware of to outweigh policy in this case, the recommendation is to refuse. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Freeman. 
first to speak, we have the applicant, Sally Quinn, and I see she is here on the phone. You will have three minutes to speak and you will have a 30 second warning before the end. Just before you start, can I just remind all members, please, that they do need to have their cameras on in chambers. Thank you. Sally, start when you're ready. Thank you very much. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Um, I'd like to ask for your support on this application for the following reasons. Our chalet is placed in a lovely corner of a large, well-maintained garden and is idyllic for a couple. No children, no dogs, just wanting a quiet, peaceful and relaxing stay within an area of outstanding natural beauty, especially after the last couple of years where a majority of town people have been isolated and restricted from visiting the countryside. It overlooks a two-acre field and woodland, which is hopefully very uplifting for one's mindset. Regarding noise to our immediate neighbours, this will be kept to a minimum as we live on site and wouldn't want noisy, rowdy or bullish behaviour in our own garden so we can influence it. There is also a seven-foot-high, three-foot-deep hedge between us that would act as a noise buffer. A uh, patio of our neighbours is a good 40 feet away from our cabin, so with the hedge and natural distance, there shouldn't be any noise disturbance at all. Plus, I guess the neighbours and holidaymakers wouldn't all be out at exactly the same time. I can think of three other similar setups within Sheldon and surrounding area that have been established for many years and worked very successfully and still are to this day, and the council have no problems with those at all. We have within a one and a half mile radius a brilliant premier shop, post office, award-winning Indian restaurant, excellent fish and chip takeaway, doctor's surgery and a hairdresser. There is very little intrusion on our lives in our house as the chalet has its own car space, own private entrance and own pathway. There actually wouldn't be any difference to that of a hotel lobby. We are on site for any questions or information or help any visitors would need and local attractions aren't so far away. Our chalet would be on a six-month summer-only operation and there will be gaps within that six months to accommodate us going away for our own family holiday. So it would never be back-to-back -back bookings. One would assume holidaymakers are going off in the morning to explore and spend money within our community around Devon. We are only accepting couples that have been double injected against COVID, so trying to be responsible. And I noticed on the letter of recommendation that it was mentioned about the previous application, 2017, for the holiday lodges. That has no parallel influences whatsoever. That application was for numerous shepherd's huts, caravans, pony and cart rides, children, dogs, and horse lorries. So 30 seconds no remaining. No justification for comparison at all. We have one small attractive cabin tucked away in a lovely peaceful area, and hopefully it would give somebody a nice, short and relaxing and peaceful break. So I ask you if you could please rethink this application. Many thanks. Thank you very much, Sally Quinn. Next, Thank we you. have the... Next, we have the ward member, Councillor Brown, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, the, the applicant has referred to the um, application that was refused by the inspector um, about four years ago. Uh, like she said, it was for horse boxes, caravans, new build units on the site that was a um, totally undeveloped site and there was bad access to it. Um, they, they were the reasons that it was refused. This, planned application is totally different and in September last year a planned application for a, for a holiday unit was approved less than 500 yards from this site the application was recommended for refusal by Devon Highways but even in the light of this the planning department gave it delegated approval because the benefits outweigh the harm this application is for change of use from auxiliary to holiday accommodation this is a very similar application to one in Yarkham, which Planning East have written for delegated approval, but haven't sent it out just yet because they want to see how this application goes. The application in Sheldon would create less traffic movements as the parents in that accommodation lived there full time until recently. This unit of accommodation is already established. If given change of use to a holiday, there will be no additional building no increase in floor space. It would help the local economy and tourism in East Devon. There have been objections from Westmead next door to this property, but as the report states, the outdoor space is not likely to be used in material different way to the existing 
garden space. And it's not considered that the proposal would use, um, would be so harmful as to justify refusal of this application. We as a committee need to support the local economies at this time and approve this application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Brown. Next, we have committee ward member, Councillor Key, please. Yes, I mean, um, I just uh, emphasise, you know, what um, Councillor Brown has said. I've nothing really further to add. I mean, it seems uh, ludicrous that um, if this actual um, uh, small uh, dwelling, if you like to call it, I mean, is not utilised in some way or another, what is it going to be do? Left to fall down, I would think. But I mean, it does seem silly that... Um, this one here is for a refusal, and as Councillor Brown mentioned, the one identical at Yarkham is uh, has not been released yet, but up for approval. Um, I, I really sort of can't um, see what the difference is, um, and therefore, I mean, I, I think that it could be, you know, sort of transferred. The actual movements from here would not be any different to what is already there. Um, it's not as if you're extending the building or enlarging it in any way. It's there. The um, surrounding areas are exactly the same. And as you heard from the applicant, the um, uh, you know noise will be retained because it's only a very very small um, uh, building um, just for for two people. So you're not going to get somebody there with two or three children at a company shouting and screaming uh, away. But uh, what I would like to do is actually hear comments from everybody else first before I propose anything. Thank you very much, Councillor Key. So next we'll move to um, committee members. And um, first on my list, I have Councillor Desarum, please. Thank, thank you very much indeed, Chair. Um, I've listened very closely to the arguments put forward, and, and I think that... The, the um, other material considerations we should look at are the limited economic benefits and, and the fact that we are looking at a conversion of an existing building and um, also the mental health of those who visit, um, that we will be promoting mental health and well-being for the visitors. And we've only got um, issue of a six-month summer only, and, they, and, and then it's never going to be back-to-back. So for that reason, I would support Councillor Key if he was going for uh, approval, uh, because I feel for those reasons, the other material considerations outweigh the policy conflicts. So thank you very much indeed, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Desarum. Next on the list, I have Councillor Pook, please. Thank you. The, the differences between this and the previous application are, are, are minimal, but there are a couple of differences. This one, or the previous one, was supporting an existing business, whilst this is going to be augmenting a sort of a, a family income. Um, so that might be one, one thing slightly negative in it. But on the positive side, um, the, we, it's an existing building, so there's no change to the, the street scene or the, the built environment at all. The only thing I would consider, and, and the applicant did bring this up, um, is the impact on neighbours because this is in a, in a sort of a, a slightly more urban setting. There are closer neighbours, but I think um, the applicant and even the officers have, uh, have agreed there's sort of mitigation there. Um, and so on balance uh, and the benefits to the um, to the overall community, the economic community, overall economic community um, and utilising an, an existing building, I'd be happy to support. Thank you very much, Councillor Pook. Um, next on my list, I have Councillor Gazard, please. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I'd, I'd be happy to support, Chair. Um, as has already been said, this is an existing building, and it's, so it, it's already in place, and it's not going to be altered um, at all. Um, I, I understand the the issues raised by by the neighbour, but we've we've all heard the assurance that have been given by the applicant. So um, I'm be happy to accept those assurances. But um, I think what we have to consider is that this is going to provide some sort of unique accommodation if it's going to be for for couples, um, and it will surely 
um, help with the well-being for a nice rest for, for visitors that want to come. Um, so I, I think the economic uh, benefit is it outweighs the, um, the reason for refusal. So I would be happy to support it, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Gazard. Um, so we've got lots of people in support at the moment. Um, next, I'll go to Councillor Woodward. Thank you very much, Chair. Well, I'll satisfy your requirements and speak against in as much as it is different from the last one where we were looking at sustainability and um, and there were no objections uh, apart from the officers to the last one. But in this one, there, there is um, objection from the neighbours and their property is right next door to this one. Um, it would be nice if we possibly could have heard from them, but um, we haven't, we've, but we have what they have said in the report. And although there might be assurances, the, it's not known the variety of people that might be occupying that property during the summer, whether they'll be in the garden making a noise, we don't really actually know, but I think we should actually take into account the views of the adjoining neighbours and um, therefore I would be happy not to approve um, this and go along with the office's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Woodward. Next, I have to speak. Councillor Whibley, please. Thank you very much, um, Chair. I think um, there is an element of sustainability in this. And um, although we take each application on its own merits, if I, I couldn't speak on the previous one in the way that I did and not do the same thing here. Um, in terms of local services, there are none. It will be people arriving in cars. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm a little bit confused as to as to how um, there are other um, similar things in in similar areas that 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 have been allowed um, because it, you know as as has been suggested if if they've been allowed why can't this be but um, I I I think yeah I, I think my view with this is the same as the previous one despite the fact that the building is already there and you're not adding anything new i do still have the same concerns with this as with the previous application thank you thank you very much councillor wibley so we've had now we'll go back to councillor ollie davy uh yeah this is this is the dissenting side of the chamber by the way uh, over here there's always somebody um, who's against it. Um, I think for the same reasons as the previous application, I'm happy to support this one. It's actually going to generate fewer journeys than uh, the previous use of the building. Um, I don't know if we could condition that it is only to be used as uh, holiday accommodation, which would actually ensure that it didn't revert to permanent accommodation um, previously, I'm, I'm sure Ed could um, uh, comment on that. Um, and um, it, we're talking about an existing building in this case. So if anything, the case is even stronger. And as uh, one of uh, my colleagues has said, um, if, if it isn't used for that, what are they going to use it for? Um, it's a redundant building and uh, it seems sensible to support uh, a modest increase in tourism um, by uh, by supporting this. So and on this occasion, I'm happy to support it. Thank you very much, Councillor Davy. Next, we'll go over to Councillor Key, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I mean, uh, I, I think uh, at the bottom of page 56 here, E16 does come into it now because it says supports conversion or use of existing buildings in the open countryside within close proximity to the, to the main dwelling. Um, and therefore, um, I mean, having heard sort of what other people have said, I'm more than happy to put forward a proposal of approval on this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Key. Do we have a seconder? Yes, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Desarum. Do you wish to speak? No, I've already spoken. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. In that case, we'll just go over to Ed with reference to any conditions, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, well, I, th I think the only condition that's been mentioned and is probably the only one that would 
that uh, directly occurred to me is about conditioning the use of um, the building in terms of the holiday accommodation use, as mentioned by Councillor Davey. Um, obviously, the building's already there, so I don't think there's anything in terms of the, the materials or, or its construction. I suppose the only other thing that occurs to me is Councillor Woodward um, made a comment about the impact on the neighbours, whether or not if uh, if members are, have any concerns about that issue, there's any conditions they would want to impose to try and minimise that um, I had meant when I presented the application to talk you through the photographs which show the relationship with the neighbour if members haven't picked up on this this is the proposed building here the neighbouring property here there is this beach hedge down here which has been reinforced to some extent on on this side um, by additional planting uh, which I think helps and you can see the hedge there I think from an officer's perspective, while we understand the concerns of, of the neighbour, uh, as has been said, as a, as a seasonal use, uh, and I don't think it's in terms of the nature of the noise and activity likely to be a great deal different from its use as an annex, plus the fact that it's uh, obviously associated with the main dwelling uh, and the owners of that will be on hand should you know you have something like a party taking place that's causing noise and disturbance it would disturb the applicants themselves as much as the neighbours so we'd hope that that would be self-policing um, but uh, if members are concerned about that um, you could impose a condition perhaps to reinforce the boundary screening to help to minimise the impact on the neighbour would be the only other thing that uh, potentially uh, occurs to me if members are so minded. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Freeman. We'll just go back to Councillor Key to confirm those details. Yes, I'm more than happy to do that because, I mean, we'd hate for the hedge to be cut down. And I think also it's the back of the building that uh, is um, onto the hedge there. And so um, the the front is going to be away from the, uh, from the adjoining um, property. So I'm more than happy to um, accept that, yes. Thank you very much, Councillor Key. Councillor Desiree, as a second, are you happy to accept that? Absolutely, yep, spot on. Thank you very much, Councillor Desiree. I have one more person uh, on my list to speak, and that is Councillor Gazard, please. Yes, yeah, thank you, Chair. It's just taking on the, the issue that um, uh, Ed Freeman was on about the, and, 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 and Councillor Woodward, about the, the concerns of the neighbours. Is it, is it possible that we could um, notify the um, the neighbour of the telephone number of is it environmental health? Should there be a problem, at least they can ring in and it can be logged so that it can be, uh, if you like, scrutinised. Should there be a problem with noise? Thank you very much, um, Councillor Gazard. Um, I believe all that information is already available on the website should people need it um, now at any stage. Um, so as we have a proposer, Councillor Key, and a seconder, Councillor Desaram, I'd now like to go over to Mr Shaw to sum up, please. Thank you, Chair. Yes, members, I, I believe we have the reason for approval as being economic benefit outweighs the policy objections and that um, the mover and seconder have, a, have agreed to delegate conditions, primarily um, condition use as a holiday accommodation, um, the boundary screening and also a condition to address neighbour impact. I would suggest that is delegated to officers in consultation to the chair and ward member as well. Thank you. Members, when your name is called, please would you indicate whether you're in support of the motion to approve, against the motion to approve, or whether you're abstaining from the vote. Thank you. Councillor Bloxton. Support the motion to approve. Councillor Chamberlain. I support the motion to approve. Thank you. Councillor Davy. Support approval. Councillor Desaram. Support motion to approve. Councillor Gazard. Thank you. Apologies. Support approval. Thank you. Councillor Howe. Support. Councillor Key. Support. Councillor Lawrence. Support. Councillor Pook. Support motion to approve. 
Councillor Pratt. Support. Councillor Wibley. Against. Councillor Woodward. Against. Councillor Wright. Support. Thank you. With 11 votes in support and two against, the vote to approve has been carried. Thank you very much, Wendy. Next, we move on to agenda item 13, application number 21 forward slash 0176 forward slash full minor Coombe Hayes Farm Bungalow, Honiton, pages 72 to 79. We have the ward member, Councillor Twist, to speak, I believe. Um, but first of all, I will go over to Mr Freeman to present his report. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. So um, just so members are aware, Coombe Hayes uh, Farm Bungalow is uh, located here um, just to the south of the built up area boundary of Honiton, which you can see highlighted in the black line on the plan. Um, it is area of outstanding natural beauty. Uh, and this application is for the change of use of land from an agricultural field to residential use and retention of a summer house. Uh, so the land concerned is um, highlighted in red on the plan uh, with the summer house outlined as well in red and you can see the other land owned by the applicant highlighted in blue. Um, so essentially this is a retrospective application uh, for this land that's been bought within the garden of Coombe Hayes Bungalow and the summer house. Uh, as I say, uh, well this is the summer house, um, so we have plan showing it. It, it is uh, timber clad which helps to minimise its landscape impact and ensure it uh, is relatively discreet within the landscape and uh, you can see it in situ uh, read in relationship to the main bungalow and other buildings within the group. Uh, the rest of the area of land concerned uh, is basically laid to grass other than a small sort of patio area uh, into the front of the summer house, which I understand is largely used as a, as a home office. Uh, I think we've got some of the photographs that show uh, the surrounding area in a bit more detail. Uh, and uh, this is a view taken from the road looking into this area. Uh, you can see the boundary is quite well screened. Um, there's uh, perhaps glimpsed views, shall we say, uh, through the vegetation. You can just about make out uh, the summer house through that gap, uh, I think, there. But uh, as, as I say, the landscape impact is, is very, very minor. Uh, having said that, the site is within the area of outstanding natural beauty, and so we should be um, applying very strict controls over development in this area. Uh, and that, uh, for that reason, this proposal is not specifically supported by policies within the local plan. However, as officers, we feel the landscape impact is so limited, uh, with the area barely visible other than in glimpsed through views from the roadside. Um, and uh, even then read in the context of the existing property and those of neighbouring properties, we feel that this development is in fact acceptable as a departure from policy, um, subject to conditions uh, as detailed in the report, which primarily seek to remove permitted development rights um, for further buildings and structures that would further urbanise the garden area and um, detract from its rural environment. Um, the other conditions relate to uh, the materials uh, used on the summer house to ensure that those are not uh, changed and remain sensitive to its location. Um, and there's an issue uh, recommended by the Environment Agency with regard to flood warning uh, services in the area. Uh, subject to those conditions, the recommendation is to approve. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Mr Freeman. First to speak, we have Ward Member, Councillor Twist, please. Chair, yeah, thank you very much. Um, apologies for my complete confusion this morning. I rocked up at Blackdown House as I misread the year uh, and looked around the library, as I would call it, and realised I was a, uh, being a complete village idiot. So I've come home now and I'm uh, joining you by Zoom. So my apologies and, uh, and also by way of an explanation, if you thought, who's this bloke rocking up into our meeting? Um, with regard to this application, I'm always concerned uh, with any applications in this part um, of East Devon that come to EDDC 
that are either in either of our uh, AONBs. And I've got a record, a very clear record of not supporting um, a number of applications that aren't the same as this, but certainly within the a AOMB. However, I'm, I am supporting this, th this application because of the reasons um, which have been provided in my comments. And um, it's, it's largely because I suppose we've changed a lot in the, in the last 12 months. We're, we're adapting to working from home. It encourages that. There's a small vegetable patch there. You can just about see it as well, which, in grow, which um, encourages the growth of food production, which together may reduce slightly and marginally car travel uh, to get fur further afield. But in truth, this site is a lot closer to facilities that are a large part of, of the town. So it's quicker to walk, to say, for example, to Tesco from here than from Pine Park. So the reality of, of, of it is it may be outside of the built up area boundary. And on that plan now, you can see the Bassisorn Way, which is that sort of U shaped road, um, which is in proximity um, to the site. And if you look up here where the pointer's going, that's the Tesco supermarket, for example. But I'm just set saying you don't need a car to actually drive to a supermarket. You don't need a car to drive to the railway station. You don't need a car to drive in into town. You can cycle or, or walk in. So for that reason, I accept there's a built up area boundary. I accept it's a departure from policy. But I think also we might struggle if this if this is refused today. If you look on the exact summary um, on page two of the report, the final paragraph highlights that um, the residential use of the land, blah, 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 um, may have become lawful. I know that's arguable, but I think um, if it went to appeal, should you not be minded to approve, we might struggle. However, I think with this one, you've got to exercise a degree of common sense and look at the situation. If this application was half, an, half, a, uh, half a mile further into the AONB, I suspect my view would be different, uh, but it's not. I think it's actually within a sustainable location. And on that basis, I'm urging you to support the application and approve it. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Councillor Twist. I'll now come over to committee members. And first on my list to speak, I have Councillor Howell, please. I think this couldn't be any easier. I'd propose approval as per officers of recommendation with the conditions Mr Freeman set out. Thank you. I'll second that. Thank you very much. Yes. Councillor Howe and Councillor Key has just seconded yes. that. Would you like to speak, Councillor Key? Yes, in actual fact, I did um, uh, drive by this to actually see if I could see, and I had to stop the car in the lane get out and I could just see through the, the tops of the bushes there. Um, but I did also drive on a bit further and uh, spoke to the local farmer and I said, you know, I said, how long ago, I said, was this agricultural land? He said, years ago, he said, <laughs> he said it's been cut neatly he said for he said probably the last eight or ten years so he said they haven't had any livestock on it at all so um that's uh it's it's i mean they're going through the process of changing it from agriculture because it, years ago it was agriculture but i've no hesitation in actual seconding the recommendation for approval thank you thank you very much councillor key I don't see any more blue hands for anybody, committee members, to speak. Um, so we'll go over to Mrs Shaw to sum up with our proposer of Councillor Howe and seconder Councillor Gee, please. Thank you, Chair. Yes, members, you have a motion to approve subject to the conditions as set out in the report. When your name is called, please would you indicate whether you support the motion to approve, whether you're against the motion to approve, or whether you're abstaining from the vote. Thank you. Councillor Bloxham. Yes, support the motion to approve. Councillor Chamberlain. I support the motion to approve. Thank you, Wendy. Councillor Davy. Support approval. Councillor Tassaram. Support motion to approve. Thank you, Wendy. Councillor Gazard. Support approval. Councillor Howe. Approve. Councillor Key. Approve. Councillor Lawrence. Support approval. 
Councillor Pook. Support approval. Councillor Pratt. Support approval. Councillor Wibley. Support approval. Councillor Woodward. Support approval. Councillor Wright. Support approval. Thank you. That's unanimously supported. So that application to approve has been carried. Thank you ever so much, Wendy. Next, we move on to agenda item 14, application number 21, forward slash 0135, forward slash full, minor, Crabs Farm, Broom Lane, Tithily, Axminster, pages 80 to 87. I would like to welcome to the meeting Sebastian Cope, but first of all, I would like to go to Mr Freeman to present his report. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. So this application at Crabs Farm Tavoli is um, before you today because, as with the previous application, it represents a departure from the development plan, in this case because the site is in the open countryside and outside of any residential curtilage, and it's not specifically supported by any policy within the local plan. However, similarly with the previous application, uh, this is effectively an extension of a residential curtilage into what is classed as open countryside in terms of the development plan, but in actual fact is part of a, a corner of a paddock area um, adjacent to the dwelling and in the ownership of the applicants uh, of the dwelling and the adjoining land, as you can see marked in blue on the plan before you. Uh, the application is effectively um, to just extend the curtilage to incorporate a triple garage, um, which you can see uh, the elevations of on the screen, um, which is partly to accommodate um, historic vehicles uh, associated with the applicant's uh, residential occupation of the adjacent house, but also I believe one of the vehicles is agricultural in nature and used um, to uh, maintain the adjoining land outlined in blue. Um, and so in terms of the nature of the building for uh, maintenance of the land, we would probably consider it being beyond the residential curtilage as acceptable in, those, in that sense. However, as part of its use is, is residential in nature, that shouldn't be under our policies located beyond the residential curtilage of the dwelling. Um, however, uh, given that this site is, is not prominent within the, the landscape, um, it's very much read in the context of the existing buildings in the area, which if I move to the photographs, you'll see. So this is the area already um, hardcore. This is the access drive and you can see some of the existing buildings either side of that driveway. Um, and we believe the structure would be read very much in the context of those buildings, very limited public views, I say very limited landscape impact. Um, and it would not impact on the setting of the listed building, uh, the grade two listed building uh, adjacent to the site. Um, so on that basis, uh, despite it being a departure from policy, we've not identified any harm that would arise from such departure. And therefore the recommendation is to approve the application subject to the conditions detailed in the report on page 86. Uh, these conditions primarily relate to um, the roofing material of the building um, to ensure that that's appropriate and minimizes the landscape impact as well as the, the cladding to be used on its walls. Um, and condition four relates to landscaping along the northeast and southeast sides of the building to further minimize its landscape impact. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Freeman. Uh, we have a no, we don't. The agent, Mr. Sebastian Cove, is not here. So I believe that Wendy has something to read out in his absence. Yes, I do. Yes. Lovely. Thank you, Wendy. OK, so the following statement is from Mr. Cope. He, he writes, uh, please accept my apologies for not being able to attend the meeting this morning. This application is for the construction of a garage to provide storage for specialist vehicles. As iterated in the planning officer's report, the building is for mixed agricultural and, and ancillary residential use. The site is located beyond the existing residential curtilage of the listed building behind a large hedge. It is not visible from many places due to existing landscaping and topology of the land. 
Additional landscaping proposals have been put forward to increase the screening. This proposal will not impact the listed building or the local area. I do hope that the committee will be able to support the decision of the planning officer. End of statement. Thank you very much, Wendy. Next, we move over to the committee members to speak. And first of all, I have Councillor Key to speak, please. Thank you, uh, Chair. Yeah, I know this area very well. I was born and brought up within two miles of this uh, um, site. Um, yes, I mean, I, I feel this is a very honest person because he wants it for specialised vehicles. I had one, an application in Lafayette, where they wanted an agricultural barn and put 10 specialist vehicles, <laughs> antique vehicles in it. So I feel that this is a very honest um, application that is doing. Um, yes, I mean, uh, I'd like to see it sort of screened there um, and uh, no hesitation in uh, putting forward the recommendation of approval with the four recommendations as uh, listed. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Key. That's a proposal from Councillor Key. Do we have a seconder? Happy to second, Chair. Lovely. Thank you, Councillor. How would you like to speak next? Nothing further to add, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, so I have no other speakers on my list, so we will go over to Mrs Shaw to sum up, please. Thank you, Chair. Yes, members, you have a motion to approve subject to the conditions as set out in the report. When your name is called, please would you indicate whether you support the motion to approve, whether you're against the motion to approve, or whether you're abstaining from the vote. Thank you. Councillor Bloxham. Yeah, happy to support the motion to approve. Thank you. Councillor Chamberlain. Support the motion to approve. Thank you. Councillor Davy. Support approval. Councillor Desaran. Support motion to approve. Councillor Gazard. Support approval. Councillor Howe. Support. Councillor Key. Approve. Councillor Lawrence. Approve. Councillor Pook. Support approval. Councillor Pratt. Support approval. Councillor Wibley. Support. Councillor Woodward. Support. Councillor Wright. Support, thank you. Thank you. That's unanimously supported, so the vote to approve has been carried. Thank you very much, Wendy. Next, we move on to agenda item 12, application number 21 forward slash 0039 forward slash full minor Sunningdale Buckerel pages 61 to 71. We have no speakers listed for this application so we will go straight over to Mr Freeman for his report please. Uh, thank you Chair. So um, this application at, at Sunningdale Buckrell is before members because officers opinion is a uh, difference, uh, well there's a difference of opinion between officers and the now former ward member Councillor Susie Bond uh, whose comments are detailed in the report. I would however say that I think amendments through the application process may well have addressed her concerns in any event but clearly as uh, she's no longer a council we cannot seek her further views. Um, the application uh, seeks permission to uh, replace an existing two-bedroom bungalow and its associated detached garage and workshop building. Uh, the site is located to the north of the hamlet of Buckrell and is uh, hatched in black on the plan there, just on the kink in the road south of Glebe House. Um, You'll see that uh, the two buildings are some distance apart. This is the main bungalow as things stand. This is the garage and workshop building. Each has its own access from the ends of the plot. Um, these are the plans of the existing bungalow at Sunningdale, uh, a fairly modest um, two bedroom bungalow with a lean to extension on the side. And the workshop building is actually quite a large workshop building, um, single storey, as I say, located to the north of the existing bungalow. Uh, so the proposal is to replace both buildings uh, in the case of the bungalow uh, with a sort of traditional log cabin type structure. Um, and in the case of um, 
the workshop uh, with, with a triple garage with storage space above. And as you can see, both have parking uh, and access. There's an access and parking arrangements proposed to the main bungalow, which is what we serve as the existing bungalow, I should say, um, and also parking area uh, down here with the garage and workshop. Uh, these are the floor plans of the proposed bungalow. Um, still quite a modest structure, two bedrooms with uh, a terrace at one end and the elevations here. Uh, so in terms of policy, this is considered to be um, an appropriate replacement of the existing dwelling, which is permissible under, under policy um, and has proved relatively uncontroversial in itself. Uh, I think the main concerns related to the uh, replacement to the garage and workshop building, which was originally a much more substantial structure. In fact, you can see dotted on these floor plans, uh, the footprint of the original application uh, which was for a much larger structure here, which would also have provided um, a, an annex for the applicant's daughter, um, but in officer's view would in fact have been a de facto separate dwelling. Um, and such this was negotiated out of the application throughout the process and this structure has subsequently been substantially reduced in size and is now very much an ancillary garage with storage space above thereby overcoming the earlier concerns that we had as officers and hopefully addressing some of the concerns the former ward member had as well. Again, on the elevations, you can see the proposal as it now stands and a dotted outline of the structure that had originally been proposed. Um, I say we think this is an appropriate replacement of the existing workshop and garage building, which is not of a dissimilar uh, size and scale to, to this. Um, with the replacement structure uh, in both cases representing uh, probably a more attractive form of development to uh, the existing rather tired looking structures. So this is a photograph you can see of the existing bungalow with its lean to. Um, and if I scroll down, let's look from the front. Um, as you can see, it's not particularly well screened for, from the road, but um, quite appropriate to its context. Uh, that's looking from the road of the access and at the other end, this is the access into the existing garage and workshop building, which again, I think is looking uh, quite tired and, and past its best. Um, and so the replacement of these structures is probably a visual enhancement. Uh, and as I say, because they are a similar scale and size of the original structures, we think this is in line with the provisions of policy H6 of the local plan in relation to replacement dwellings in the countryside. And on that basis, the recommendation is to approve uh, subject to the conditions detailed at the end of the report. Uh, these conditions, uh, which I think are on page uh, 69 and 70, uh, relates primarily to just ensuring that we have appropriate um, materials uh, and finishes to the proposed buildings. Um, a hard and soft landscaping scheme is proposed, um, ensuring the use of the proposed replacement garage to ensure that it's ancillary and use to the principal dwelling. Um, details of foul drainage, uh, finished floor levels, and also that the uh, existing uh, structures are, are demolished in a timely fashion. So we don't um, by stealth end up with uh, additional dwellings on this site. Subject to those conditions, the recommendation is to approve. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Freeman. So now we move over to commission members. And first on my list, I have Councillor Desara, please. Thank you very much. Um, with members' approval, I'm happy to propose uh, approval for the following reasons. Uh, firstly, as we've heard, it's a modest structure. Secondly, it's an appropriate uh, replacement under policy H6. Uh, thirdly, the original garage was much more substantial. Fourthly, it's a more attractive form of development. And, and finally, as has been mentioned, it's a visual enhancement, uh, particularly as it says on page 68, it is considered that objection to the latest division to the size scale would now be difficult to justify. For all those reasons that I've summarised, I would propose approval and obviously I await a seconder. Thank you very much, Councillor Desara. Do we have a second? Uh, second lots no. of lots of people. We'll go with um, Councillor Pratt, please. Thank you, uh, Chair. Yes, uh, I'd be happy to uh, second this. Um, I think the important thing is it's condition 
5, which is proposed in the recommendation, refers to the, uh, the garage being ancillary to the principal dwelling. And that was one of the uh, original objections uh, uh, to this application. So uh, I'm, I'm certainly happy to, to, uh, to second uh, the proposal. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Pratt. Next, I have to speak, uh, Councillor Wright, please. Councillor Pratt has said it all for me. I think we can move to the vote. <laughs> Thank you very much. Does anyone else have anything to add? Uh, if not, remove your hands. If so, I would go to the next person, which is Councillor Gazard. I'm going down my list. Nothing new to add, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Gazard. So we have Councillor Davy, please. Yeah, just very quickly. I mean, I'm pleased to see that there's landscaping and um, planting uh, conditioned. Um, I'm rather alarmed at the number of trees that have been removed from the site, as you could see in the photographs. Um, and I, I would hope that uh, suitable replacements for those uh, will be uh, put in. Thank you very much, Councillor Davey. Next, we have Councillor Pook. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. I thought you were about to go, about to go straight to the vote. Um, yeah, no objection to the to replacement of the bungalow and the and the um, the garage. That seems quite natural. But um, I'd just like to know um, what sort of comments um, Mr. Freeman has regarding these pretty substantial changes to the entranceways and all the all the times we discuss here. In fact, at this very meet in this very room last time, just losing a, a Devon bank and increasing a hedge. This seems to be, you know, because I've just looked on Google Maps and what, from what it used to be to what it is now, this seems like wholesale destruction along here. So I just wondered what's happened um, so far as planning permission and control of that, that development or that work. Thank you very much, Councillor Pook. We'll go over to Mr. Freeman, if possible, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, well, I think all that's happened is potentially widening of the original accesses and obviously they're taking out a lot of vegetation, as has been pointed out along here, but none of the vegetation or, or trees were protected in any way, and I don't know what health they were in uh, as to what, what loss has, has happened there, either in terms of habitat or the quality of those species, but we don't have control over that uh, in terms of the accesses themselves being onto a, an unclassified road. I don't believe they would have needed permission to, to do the widening works. So I don't think there's, they, they've done works that are, uh, are within our control. So I don't think there's anything we can actually do about those. Um, but I do hope as part of these uh, wider works that obviously they will tidy this up and through the landscaping scheme, uh, which was both hard and soft, we, we can ensure that we get appropriate boundary treatments along this frontage that respect the character of the area. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Mr Freeman. Uh, did that answer your questions, Councillor Pook and Councillor Davey, reference to trees and things? Lovely. Uh, I believe we've got issues with uh, Mrs Shaw at the moment, who is no longer in the meeting due to IT issues. So... We can go over to Wendy. Thank you, Chair. So, yes, when I uh, call your name, if you could just confirm whether you're for the motion, against the motion, or whether you would like to abstain. So I'll move to Councillor Bloxham. For the motion to approve. Thank you. Councillor Chamberlain. Support the motion to approve. Councillor Davey. Support approval. Councillor Dasaran. Support motion to approve. Councillor Gazard. Support approval. Councillor Howe. Support approval. Councillor Key. Approve. Councillor Lawrence. Support approval. Councillor Pook. Approve. Councillor Pratt. Support approval. Councillor Whibley. Support. Councillor Woodward. Support approval. Councillor Wright. Support approval. Thank you. That's unanimously supported. So the vote to approve has been carried. A 
I think you're on mute, Chair. I was. Thank you very much, Wendy. <laughs> that brings our meeting to an end. And I would like to thank everyone, including any members of the public watching online, for taking part. However, can I just remind all those present that, us, uh, that the supporting officers will confirm when the meeting is no longer being recorded or going live. And until then, your comments will be live to the public. Thank you very much, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you, Chair, and good morning, or good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers.